going in. Right. Um, <laughs> so I think it would make sense for us to go up there. Yep. It's, more, it's more official. So. Okay. Uh, is that okay? That's totally okay, fine. Okay, great. Um, uh, point of order, Madam oh. Chair. Yes. The, uh, there's a pending challenge to the legitimacy of that appointment that has not been responded to, uh, which includes the uh, lack of legitimacy of the appointment. That needs to be dealt with first. <laughs> um, we have time to respond. I'm sorry? We have 10 days to respond. We have 10 days to respond. Thank you. Oh, do you? I was going to be like, have us here. Yeah, you would be more of a I know, I just don't want to have this. I'm going to take a picture. Yeah. Because you would be. No water bottle. Oh. Madam Chair, to, to, to not respond to the issue that questions the legitimacy. Uh, in, with a formal legal argument is, is corruption. No, we have 10 days to respond. Yeah, but you have to respond before you make the appointment because it, it would necessitate a different course of action. Yeah, we, we don't believe the appointment is, is So, we need to see that's your opinion. But you're not a lawyer either. We have a legal opinion. Oh, it's your call. Oh, sure. you're, um, you're making a mockery out of this democratic process. So, we can do this and we want to do this. Or under the names and penalties of perjury. I do. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will faith, faithfully execute the office of city council member for the city of Montpelier and will therein do equal right and justice to all persons to the best of your judgment and ability according to law? So help you God or under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. All right. You are sworn. I guess I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Now, the book is just a sort of silly thing because it goes back to 69. The oath is no good. In fact, I have to cross out yes. men and put in persons. <laughs> but people like to you know, just add their names. Right. Oh, this town, man. All right. Um, I'm not wrong. Sure. I can check. I'll let you put in your own name because I always. For you to not respond to that. Okay. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, sure. Over there? Okay, great. Sure. All right, well, I think uh, we, should, we should get started then. Um, Okay. Welcome, um, Jennifer. So glad to have you. Um, so I'm going to call this meeting to order. First thing is to review and approve the agenda. Um, and I don't think there are any um, changes that folks have to the agenda, right? Okay. Um, so on to general business and appearances. It's an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council on a topic that is not otherwise on our agenda. Um, we have only really one other item, which is our strategic planning workshop. Um, so we're going to break this up into a couple parts. If you have a comment that is not pertaining to the strategic plan, um, now would be the time to do that. If you have a comment that is pertaining to the strategic plan, um, I'm, we're going to have uh, members of the public uh, have an opportunity to comment just at the very beginning about that process. Uh, or content of the strategic plan, and then and after that we will go into our workshop, and that um, uh, we will not have an opportunity after that during this meeting for further comment from the public, though there will be more opportunities in the future uh, for the public to comment on the strategic plan. <clears throat> and so I realize that was uh, kind of a lot of information. Uh, but uh, for now, general business appearances, if you have any comments, if you'd say your name, uh, where you live, and try to keep your comments in two minutes. Thank Great. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Is there any fans in this room for the floor? No. Uh, I'll turn that one off. 
Is that where that's the bar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The microphone is on. Uh, Stephen Whitaker from Montpelier. I believe you're doing a really disservice to faith and trust in government by when there's a pending uh, notice of open meeting violation challenging the legitimacy of the appointment that was made at last Wednesday's meeting. Uh, that, in effect, should be discussed and debated and responded to prior to swearing in and beginning council business. Uh, because in effect, you're, you're sweeping aside a, a serious issue where a person who was not present and apparently not even informed of the need to be present at the meeting where the appointments were made and other candidates who were present uh, were disregarded and were not notified prior to executive session that you would be contacting other candidates from within executive session. They, they were not noticed as being a necessary participant in the executive session, uh, as, such as an engineer or a, an attorney or a staff person. So in effect, you, you have uh, corrupted the process. And then to pr take the second step of not responding to the open meeting law violation prior to True, you could have gone ahead and, and ratified that decision or and continued to appoint the same candidate, but you didn't do that. You you actually just ducked and barreled through, which is, is really corrupt, Madam Mayor. Uh, you, you really need to look at the damage you're doing to this town and to faith and trust in government. Uh, the transparency and uh, due process. Uh, other candidates were not notified at least one other candidate was not notified of the opportunity to be heard at that meeting. And yet, you made your decision either prior to the meeting, and the whole thing was a farce, you know, a pre preordained conclusion, <coughs> or you uh, notified the one candidate you wanted and made the appointment subsequent. But either way, you've, you've damaged the public's trust in this process. Um, I have other topics, but this one's needed to be said on behalf of others and citizens. There's a lot of talk around town about how, how bad this was. And you all decide to just sweep it under the rug like you've done the shooting of Mark Johnson and many other things. Thank you. Procedurally, um, Stephen, would you please put your mask up so it's functioning? Thank you. Um, anyone online or, or present uh, wish to add anything? Okay, um, and so we, just as a heads up, we will uh, respond within the requisite 10 days, and uh, we will go from there. Uh, okay, so from there, okay, so we are, oh, oh so on to the strategic planning workshop. Any uh, public comment specifically pertaining to the strategic plan? Yeah. Would you like to be introduced to our new candidate? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> We're going to do an introduction piece, too, as part of the process tonight. Okay. It's just, okay, fine. Is that, is that a right? Fine. That's fine. Yeah. Then, okay. okay. Great. Um, <coughs> all right, so any, any comments about <coughs> the strategic plan? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I mentioned that the two meetings ago that uh, over recent years, I have brought a growing list of issues related to public safety, uh, trash in the rivers, shopping carts in the rivers, uh, feces in our alleyways and our churchyards along the riverbank. And none of those have apparently been collected anywhere into a list which you could then categorize into the four categories in this strategic planning meeting. They all seem to just get lost in the noise of this dysfunctional uh, administration. So I would ask that you uh, direct staff to pull out all those comments from my, myself and others about the problems that have grown over decades in this town that have been ignored and take this opportunity to fit them into the strategic plan. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Or online? Okay. All right. So with that, we are going to.
go into our strategic planning uh, workshop time. And for this, I'm turning it over to Cameron. Bill is going to actually kick us off tonight. We've got a really great presentation. <laughs> yeah. I do get paid to say that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, so I just click. Yep. <clears throat> so I'll try to get through this quickly. We thought uh, it was a good chance to go through what the process is, a little bit of our roles. We have a new council member, so it seemed like a good time. Uh, we didn't do a retreat or anything this year to kind of go through some of the broad overview. So I'm going to hit the broad overview. Cameron will then go through the specific process for tonight. So our, that, yeah, I just said that. So what, that's our agenda for tonight. Why, why do we do this? Who does what roles? What's the product? And then uh, the workshopping and those kinds of things. So we start here. This is the Athenian Oath. And I wanted to share this. This is the oath that ancient uh, residents of Athens took when they became of age. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But the last sentence is, thus, in all these ways, we will transmit this city not only not only not less, but greater and more beautiful than it was transmitted to us. And I think that's really our mission as elected officials and public officials and uh, kind of the basis of all that we do. So we'll get some, some uh, inspiration from way back. So why strategic planning? Anybody know what this, anyone seen this box before? Hands, who, what is it? Oh, it's, like, what is it? Yeah, where, where have you seen that before? Oh, just other, like, Workshop. planning strategy. <laughs> <laughs> like, this last year. <laughs> this, is, yeah. <laughs> this is from Stephen Covey's Seven yeah. Habits of uh, Highly Effective People. And he talks about your work, and your work tends to fall into four quadrants. You know, you're urgent and important. you got to do. Urgent, not urgent, but important. So you need to plan. Uh, urgent, but not important, delegate. And not urgent, not important. To eliminate. So to plan your time to do your thing. So as, as an elected body, we need to use our time wisely. You know, I looked at the number of meetings we have and everything. So we have about 125 hours in a year that you all meet in session, which is how you, as you know, how you do your work. So that's roughly three works, work weeks a year. So all that you're trying to take on and do as a group, the time you spend is about three weeks. So obviously, we would like to have you focused on the stuff that you have to do because you got to vote to approve something and looking forward to the future and having the, the urgent, well, I mean, not that what we do isn't important, but having the work done by others. So it's how do you focus your time on important leadership issues and really think about your role as council and then to provide clarity. This is why we do, you know, um, the, more clear, the more clear that you can be to your staff the better we can respond. So, you know, some, as you know, sometimes we'll say, someone will say, do we need a motion? It's like, yes, a motion would be great, because then we have clarity. So this is an iceberg. Anyone have any guesses why I put an iceberg up here? <laughs> There's a little that shows and a lot that happens. <laughs> right, so a lot of what the council talks about is up here in the public, and a lot of what goes on for city government is down here. Um, so just to, it's a good visual, and we're going to get back to this. Uh, whoops. No, we're not moving. I know. I'm sorry. Hold on a second. We've got an online issue. Yeah, yeah. we're having it's a... It's stuck on the first page. We're having a, a moment. Oh. Sorry. Let's just take in the iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> become one That's with its... Working. As long as we're not the Titanic. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's great. Right. Right. I'm going to stop sharing, and then I'm going to share again. And we're going to see what happens. <coughs> yes, we, for those, we had a big tech crash down this afternoon getting ready for this meeting, which is why we had to, all right, it's up there now. Is that working? Oh, yeah. right. Uh, cool. All right, but now it's not advancing. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank you. But now, but now, it's enough. Way to ruin it. Look <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. Oh, 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 oh. 
Thank you for noticing that, Donna. I would have not noticed. So yeah. 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 So that means you. people following along at home. Sorry, no, interruption. Sure. Uh-uh. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> or you want to have a chair? Is it, <laughs> is it possible that uh, you have to click it down on the laptop instead of, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, do you use the yeah. arrows on the laptop instead oh, of? Oh, fine. I'll sit over here. Can we go back? No. <laughs> Please? Just thinking out loud. All right. So, we've got our, we've got our ice cream. You don't have to squash that much. So, next. So, when we think about uh, any organization, um, there's kind of three things that come up. One is vision. So, where are we going? We're going to spend a lot of time on that tonight because that's where, where you're at. The next is external authority. So, who do you have to get approval from to do what you want to do? So for these folks over here, it might be me. For me, it might be you. And for you, it might be the voters. But in, or in the state government or federal government, whoever it is. So, so there's always someone who you have to bring along next. And then there's your capacity. What do you know how to do? So do you have the right people? Do you have the right equipment, the right knowledge? Uh, and so how to look at the next? So obviously, if you've got, the idea is that what in here is what you do best. So. Great example, snow plowing, right? Everybody thinks that we should plow snow here in Vermont, right? The people who vote, the city council, everybody thinks we should plow snow. And we have snow plows, we have people with dry, you know, CDLs, we have salt. We do a good job of plowing snow. So that, it's not a controversial issue. So as we think about things, go ahead, please. As we think about things, you know, think about what we need to move something forward. So we can have that. Because the more we can push those circles together, the more effective we're going to be. So as you think, it's like it might be something you know the council wants to do and the staff can do, but we don't know if the voters will go along with this, or we don't know if you know people that are stakeholders. You know, a good example would be the uh, the camping policy we've just been talking about, right? We think we need to do it. We think we have the people to do it, but the outside folks aren't there yet. So, what do we need to do to make this successful? So that's kind of what today is all about is how so we'll go back to our iceberg. So this is kind of your vision, right? This is where you want to go. This is where you're headed. This is kind of this line is right where people are saying yes, no, and then way down here is your capacity. And, and this is kind of the sweet spot. This is, you know, maybe there's stuff down here that we know how to do that we really don't need to do much anymore, or, or, or just kind of it has to be done, but it's not something people get excited about. And there may be stuff out here that's really a reach. And then there's stuff that the people haven't quite bought into yet. But this is kind of where, where hopefully we can be. So taking a look at our roles, who's, who's our external authority? States, federal governments, voters. The vision is really the mayor and the city council and the, the manager to the extent that we, we and the staff recommend things to the council to then consider. And then the capacity is really the manager and staff to, to get the job done. So that's how those roles fit into those circles. So, what do the voters do? They elect, they elect you all, they vote on budgets, bonds, engage in local discussions. They're the external authority. So they're the, and they're the owners and customers. And this is kind of an interesting take. So, a person comes to city council and says, you know, I've lived here, um, I support this, and I just really feel this is a wrong thing to do, this isn't the way we should go. They're an owner, because they have a stake in the city and they want to see things go a certain way. The person comes in and says, hey, you know, this pothole on my street hasn't been fixed. That's more of a customer. I buy, I pay my taxes, I buy good roads, I'm not getting them fixed. So in some cases, uh, they're owners, in some cases they're customers. Your role is, go ahead. So the role of the council, obviously, is you establish the, the vision policy and rules. And how do you do that? Your budget, that's your number one policy document, how you, spend other, how you collect and spend other people's money. You're choosing to prioritize spending this collective sum on what are the most important things for the city. What, how you regulate, what, what standard, what are the standards for the community, how do you, what, what can you do, uh, zoning laws, ordinances, whatever those might be, fiscal oversights, making sure that the, the community is running well, you're approving contracts, those kind of things you have to do, overseeing the city manager who oversees the staff. So, is your policy being implemented the way you want? And addressing controversy. I mean, we talked about 
owners versus, you know, the owners were kind of creating the controversy, the customers could, uh, are the complaints. So really, you should be the ones, you're the owner's representatives in that regard. You're the ones that sort out the controversies. And then the council speaks with one voice. Just an important thing to remember. All of you have important roles and voices, but as a group, you only act when you act in concert. So that's where your authority and your decisions come to. So once, you know, again, once you make a decision, it's best if you can say, okay, now the council's spoken, that's our policy, even if you were on the losing side of the vote. So the role of the manager, implement the city council's policy through staff. Obviously, the one person doesn't do it all, but it's by guiding the staff. So we make sure everything gets done. Recommend policy to council. Provide advice and information to the council. Uh, as the chief administrative officer of the city, you can you know, hire, fire, supervise, manage, et cetera. Constituent service. So again, now we're, we're really the people should be addressing the complaint. <coughs> so if, if it's the customer <coughs> didn't go right, then we're, we should be trying to fix their complaint. If it's a policy controversy, that's the council needs to fix that. And then uh, follow the ICMA code of ethics. As a member of ICMA, I'm, I have a certain ethical standard, which I try to apply to all, all our staff. Uh, and then manage the internal capacity. So we're the capacity piece. So what are policy decisions, right? Think of it like an airplane. <coughs> you choose where you want to go. You choose the time you want to get there. And you choose how much you want to pay. So you could go nonstop in first class, or you could take you know cargo class and you know four layovers, and that's a different. So that's really kind of what you're doing. Where is it? And that's what you're visioning today. Where is it we want to go? How fast do we want to get there? Is it going to take us one year, two years, five years, six months, whatever it is? And are we willing to actually spend the money that it's going to take? So think of yourself like a continuing with the plane, right? Here you are, purpose and vision, you're up here. This is you thinking. This is where we're getting some of this tonight. What is it we're doing? And see, that's really council. As you look at it, the green is council, the white is still. Then your strategic goals. So now we're getting into, okay, we've got a vision now. How are we going to go forward? And, and you know, this whole, now you're picking action items. So you're establishing them. We're sort of making sure they get done. You're planning an oversight. That's, you know, adopting your budget. The stuff that happens at the meetings, the reports you get. The, updates, authorizing contracts, you know, this is the project. Now we're running the project, you're just getting updates and doing what you need to do, and then finally the day-to-day -day work. You're obviously hearing from people about it, and you, you have a role, but really that's staff work. So we're kind of landing the plane. So, to, you know, we're hoping that we're going to be spending our time here up in the, up in the sky. So <laughs> we'll have more time to get to this in this process another night. So what is strategic planning? It's basically how do we identify the needs and priorities, what are the strategies and actions to execute that vision, and then create a blueprint so that uh, we use when we're doing the budget and, and all those kinds of things. And obviously we, we become flexible with our, we become move flexible. Oh, I can type. <laughs> we'll just move past that slide. Okay. <laughs> um, what is strategic planning? So again, where do we want to be? How do we plan to get there? How will we know we're there? What resources do we need? Because again, we may not have the capacity. Maybe it's something we really want to do. Maybe the public thinks we ought to do it. But we don't know how to do it. We don't have the money to do it. We don't have the expertise. Okay, so there's a cycle of planning. I'm not going to, you have this all in front of you, so I'm not going to read through it. But basically, you start with the mission, vision, values. We take a look at where we are, where we want to go, what are our strategies and things. We, we start looking at reports of how we're doing, what we need, and then come back around and we start the circle all over again. So a little more simply. So this, this is kind of where we're going to be tonight. So we start with our vision. This is where we want to be. How, what, where are we headed? Why we exist? What do we do? What are our cultures and beliefs? What are our goals and areas? And then finally, what are our strategies to achieve the goals? And then specific initiatives and specific projects to adopt all that. So we are hoping we maybe get into here tonight and come back for, for there. So in 2018, we did this process. This hangs on my wall in the office. I'm not going to read them all, but that was what the council brainstormed as vision then. Where we want to see, where we see my pillar in 10 years. So we're going to do something like that tonight. We'll have you brainstorm, and then we'll come back with a draft vision statement. That we didn't do that last time. <coughs> Same thing with mission. We didn't do the mission statement at all. This is a terrible one. I just wrote it for this slide. Um, it's pretty. <laughs> 
it's not at all what our mission statement is. I don't even think it is. So again, we'll, we'll have you brainstorm for a few minutes about what you think the mission of city government is, and we will come back based on what that says with the draft. And our values. So um, again, our organizational values. A few years ago, our staff chose these as our, our organizational values for our staff. And we try to incorporate them into things we do. Where I would say we're so, so successful at it. Um, the council did uh, endorse those, but never really adopted them. For the council, you've adopted your rules of procedure, and we did a lot of work on group norms and how you behave when one yourselves. One area that we haven't really talked about are what are community values, and I think those are really established through the goals and priorities that you set. But there may be, I don't know if we want to get into that tonight, but something to think about in the future if we want to set. This is just what we value in our community. And again, when we talk about inclusion as one of the goals, those kinds of things. What are, what, what are our community values? So the next steps, we're going to try to look at all the big picture planning. We're going to, we're going to try to tie that all in. We're going to create goals. So the goals might be, and I'll, I'll go through that in a minute. So create goals and strategies and initiatives. And we've talked about that. But, so here's your end product is your strategic plan. Um, so it's a transparent document that everyone can see. It clearly states the goals and priorities, articulates our strategies, basically ties into all the work that we do. It's a framework for future decision. So as you know, those of you that have been around, you are on your agendas. It tells you which goal that this ties into. Our weekly reports are tied into the goals. And it provides clear direction to staff. Is this an important thing for the council? So if we have to make a decision in between a council meeting, it's like, this is really consistent with where the council wants to be. Let's just do this. Or, mm, I don't know, we might want to put this on an agenda. Let's see where that fits. Um, so do's and don'ts. Um, this is an, an organized group decision. So Jim Collins, the business guru, says if you have more than three priorities, you have no priorities. So one of the things, now obviously that's for a business. We have a, a lot of things to do. We, we're going to ask you at the end of tonight to adopt all, you know, all the goals that you want but then select the three that are really the top priority, the things that you know you think are really the top issues for the city right now. We're going to begin with vision and goals first, so that, again, Jim, uh, excuse me, Stephen Covey says begin with the end in mind. Don't fight every battle. There's a lot of stuff. We can spend a lot of time fighting. It might just be you identify this as an issue and say, okay, we'll talk. That's one of our goals is to talk about it later. So I don't know if any of you are still here that were there, but. A number of years ago, the city council had economic development as a goal, you know, support economic development. But then we got talking, well, what does that mean? And it turned out that there were seven different opinions of what economic development were. And we kind of went round and round. And the only goal that we got was, later on this year, we're going to have an agenda item to try to decide what economic development is. But that was OK, because we didn't fight, we didn't spend our time in this session fighting that battle. So if it's something that needs to be discussed later, put it on a list to be discussed later. And don't waste time telling the pilot how to fly the plane. We'll get to those projects and things, but really this is not, you know, to, to talk about specific, you know, this department doesn't do this. We'll get to that. But right now this is really the big picture. So process recommendations. Coordinate with existing plans. We've got a long list of them, but you know, we have a lot of plans. So how can those tie into these plans? Be realistic and honest. Now, I mean, I'm sure you'll be honest with each other, but be honest about what can really get done and what the capacity is, what the vision is, what the, you know, it's great to think about all these things, but then at some point you gotta say, hey, this, what can we do with what, what we have? <coughs> so, this is Teddy Roosevelt and Barry <laughs> in yep. 1912. Why do I have Teddy Roosevelt and Barry in 1912? Number one, it's a cool picture that he was in Barry. <laughs> Number two, I did a presentation like this for the Barry City Council a couple weeks ago, and so I thought they'd like it. <laughs> Number three, <laughs> this is a famous Teddy Roosevelt quote, um, and it's just meant to be a little inspiration to you. It is very sexist because of its time, and I've only heard One it. hopes. Right. <laughs> but basically, it says it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out the how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high uh, of achievement, and who at the worst 
If he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory or defeat. So you're the folks in the arena, and you're going to be criticized, and you're going to make mistakes. We're all going to make mistakes. We're going to have people that aren't there, but you and these folks here are the ones that are doing it. So set your plans, set your course, and go for it. So any questions on this part of the section? I'm going to turn over to Cameron for the process part. But any questions on sort of overview of anything about roles, what planning, strategic planning is? Do I talk too much? Um, right, I, so let's I, go and let's get all our circles lined I up. I would just say the people in the arena also are like, the employees, you know, like they're That's the staff. Said, they're the staff. You know, right. like the, fair enough. We are we're in it too, but I just right. want to recognize. Yeah. I thought I said that. All maybe, all maybe, yeah, maybe right. you yes. did. No, you're right. Yeah. So let's go get our circles lined up. And Cameron, you're on. Yeah, let's get excited. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bill. You you walk around the table to get energized. <laughs> Do this without being. So oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah, you can use the wheel. All right, we're cooking now. <laughs> All right, so we have some expectations we just want to make sure everyone is aware of. We're going to work inside your group norms that you've already identified. Um, everyone's opinion is really valid here. Nothing is off the table. If you want to throw it out there, I'm going to write it down. All right? Um, we're going to work through these topics with no interruptions, but do know I've put some breaks in there, so we're not going to be working straight through. Again, no ideas are bad ideas but trust and honesty in each other and this process is going to be really important. Yeah. So we're going to have a couple different out, yep. Just, just for, since we have a new counselor, like yeah. those group norms, like You got your handbook, correct? Your handbook. Yes. And okay. so the group norms are in that handbook. If you need that, that. I am my best. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get you one that's memorized by our next meeting. I'll get you one right now, Will. Okay. <laughs> Mostly it's it's listening, being respectful of other people's opinion, and talking through right. um, disagreements instead of going head to head. Um, but Bill is going to get you one of those. <laughs> so we do have a couple things that I'd like to come out of today's meeting with that I'd like to set up first. Um, we're going to do some big picture brainstorming in the beginning just to get juices flowing. We're going to talk about what your overall vision is. I don't expect anyone to write a vision statement. I just want your gut reaction. What is your vision for the future of Montpelier? Think 10 years from now, where do you want us to be at? And then um, we're all going to write that down. And the goal for us is to take all of that, synthesize it, write something we think you would like based off what you just said to us tonight. And we'll start a conversation about vision statements using that. Then we're going to brainstorm that mission statement, which sort of drills down a little bit of like, how, how do we as the city really manage that larger vision, right? And then, um, so again, staff will return to y'all with formal language for feedback and edits. It's just a starting point for y'all. And then what we are going to do and spend the bulk of our afternoon or evening doing is brainstorming and voting on your preferred goals. So what we're going to do for a bit is just really spit out goals. Go around the room, sort of talk about your big goal items, what you really want to see. You have goals already established. Maybe you don't like them. Maybe you want to throw them all away. I don't recommend that, but maybe you want to. Um, and then... I know that some of y'all will have strategies, things that are not those larger goals, such as like environmental stewardship, but the strategies, like projects that you want to see um, and that are, you're very passionate about. We'd like to hear those too, because we'd like to see how that aligns with work we're already doing, or if it's brand new, how do we accomplish that work for you? So those are the two big takeaway items that we'd like to get out of today. So, but because connection before content is important and we also do have a new council member, we're going to do brief personal introductions. I think that's really important. Um, so if everyone doesn't mind just going around, introducing yourself, give a brief personal introduction, maybe why you ran for office or why civic duty is important to you. And if you have a fun fact that you want to share, feel free, no pressure. <laughs> I'll start with one. Yeah. <laughs> I'll start, um, I guess, because I'm not sure you necessarily know who I am and why I'm talking to you right now. But um, my name is Cameron Niedermeyer. I'm the assistant city manager. Um, I have been working in public service almost my whole career when I wasn't waiting tables. And it's very important to me to give back to my community. Um, a fun fact is that I used to work in an organization that had more people 
that worked for the organization then lives in this entire town. So, <laughs> so this has been a big change for me. I came from North Carolina, and now I know how to snowshoe, and I think I'm the only person in my family who's ever even seen a snowshoe. So, <laughs> very exciting. So I'll pass it to Connor. Uh, sure, and I guess we're addressing Jennifer for the most part. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they know each other. Uh, Connor Casey, been on council. Uh, this is the end of the second term. Um, I, I, I think I ran, like, in my job, I, uh, I'm usually a campaign manager. I ran the Vermont Democratic Party. And I was always electing people into office. Um, so it, it was interesting to maybe switch roles and become a candidate myself. And I probably never hated a candidate as much as <laughs> myself, like, working for them. Uh, so it's been a really good experience to sort of try to take the thumb of the pulse of the, uh, the city here. And uh, I think the great thing is you, you can actually see like differences being made. You can see something being built. You can see a policy passed that affects somebody. So um, yeah, no, it's been a great experience. And I guess uh, I was baptized by a priest in the IRA. Is that? <laughs> 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 Uh, Donna Bate, uh, I'm in my fourth term, which will be up in March, which in one hand has gone really fast, and the other hand is like, whoa, it's a lot of hours. Um, <laughs> and I ran for office at the time, there was a, an attitude in the city council that bothered me in that I felt that they were making decisions without really deciding their vision. And I really wanted the vision in my mind, even when I made the little decision. So I might not have the money now, but I want to know where that money was going to. And um, I felt like over time, that council has gotten there. And it's a marvelous to experience. It's just marvelous. And uh, fun fact, I like baking pies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jack McCullough. I've, uh, I'm in the same position that you were in. I first came on the council by being appointed when uh, when the mayor vacated her council seat to uh, to become mayor, and controversial. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> we do it every time. Yes, <laughs> yes you, you can go back and uh, on YouTube and <laughs> see the video of the of the meeting at which I was appointed. Oh, whoa. <laughs> um, <laughs> and like uh, like Cameron, I've always been doing public service my whole life. I'm a legal aid lawyer. I've been a legal aid lawyer for over 40 years. And uh, I keep telling people I'm never going to retire because I love what I do. Mm -hmm. I love the city and I always tell people this is the best place in Vermont to live. And uh, the uh, what got me specifically into deciding to uh, run for council is to work on, uh, the biggest goal that I've worked on in uh, Montpelier life is, uh, is housing. And that's one of the things that's really motivated, motivated, motivated me. And I don't know if I have any fun facts. I'm not really, <laughs> I'm not really a fun, fun guy. <laughs> Should we call one of your kids? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ann Watson, um, this is my second term as mayor. Um, before that, I was a city councilor, and actually, originally, um, someone asked me to run, and I was appointed. I was also appointed as a city councilor uh, that originally. And um, yeah, I guess I, I was really interested in putting my name in for that appointment because I have always had a passion for energy. I'm kind of an energy nerd, uh, and like around renewable energy, et cetera. I teach high school physics and uh, engineering and math, and so I spend a lot of time thinking about energy um, and, and climate change, honestly. So um, that's, that's a big thing for me. And uh, fun fact, I suppose, uh, when I was in the second grade, I broke my elbow, had a cast for a while. When I got it off, I did physical therapy, and I love doing the physical therapy so much that I can bend my one elbow backwards. Strange! <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you.
change the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, no, no. Yeah, you know. <laughs> My fun fact is not going to be that fun. <laughs> it's, you know, it's just weird, weird human things, I guess. <laughs> um, well, my name is Jennifer Morton, and I have lived here in Montpelier for six years. Um, my husband is from here, and we had very small children, and we're contemplating leaving Portland, Oregon, and it was either L.A. or here, and I grew up in L.A., so I said, let's go to Vermont, because mm -hmm. I want my kids to be able to play in the woods. Mm. Um, and I love this small little town. It reminds me a lot of Olympia, Washington. <laughs> which is another place that I love. <laughs> um, but um, I was recommended to run by my neighbors. And, you know, I'm Ojibwe, and part of our culture is to give back to our community. And I haven't left Montpelier, and I don't have any intentions of leaving Montpelier mm -hmm. at this point. My family is very bought in here. My kids are growing up in the schools here. And, yeah, we don't want to leave, so I want to serve my community. Um, I already spent four years as a commissioner on the Commission of Native American Affairs for the state of Vermont for four years. And I would like <coughs> to do something a little more local. And um, I want my daughter to see that you can do whatever you want, even if you didn't realize that's what you wanted. Um, <laughs> because, you know, I mean, this is a big thing. And uh, it's a big responsibility. And I just turned 50. And I want to take on more things, so, yeah. and that sounds weird, but <laughs> I don't know, I've got this weird, renewed sense of uh, spunk, so <laughs> here I am. That's great. And then a fun fact about me, um, I worked in the music industry for about 20 years, and I was working the Grammys one night, and uh, I got pushed into a platter of hummus the size of this table by Whitney Houston. <laughs> 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 it, was, it was epic, oh and one gosh. of my favorite stories. So oh there you go. Gosh. <laughs> Any pictures? <laughs> I'm sure there are pictures somewhere of me elbow deep and hummus. But. Oh my gosh! You I did. That's amazing and terrible. Right? <laughs> or awesome? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe everything. All, all of the, all all of the above. All the things. <laughs> So I had done like the federal thing and then moved to Vermont and was working on state level policy and then was really drawn to kind of how Connor was talking about the like being able in your own community to see change and like really do tangible change like I feel like it's a lot more just academic at the state or federal level um, in a lot of ways so um, just the ability to to work with a community and, and, and give back was inspiring and then it's been such a great group of people to work with um, so it's been ran again <laughs> um, and let's see fun fact um, I lived um, out of a pickup truck for a year and a half um, in my 20s so love to travel so I've been all over the world and we were like just going doing like a greatest hits tour of like Mexico to uh, through like Western North America up into Canada and then moved to South Africa for a little while and just living out of a, a truck and somehow found our way to Vermont eventually. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm Jay <coughs> Welcome. I'm so glad to have you here, Jennifer to be back again this year. Um, <clears throat> on our next round of strategic planning and in person, not <laughs> just on computer screens, yeah. um, which is fantastic. Um, this is still my first term uh, as a counselor. Um, I ran, um, I think because of, like a lot of folks here, I love this city, you know, and um, I'm a business owner and I'm raising my young kids here and I felt like this was a way to get back uh, and an opportunity to be able to you know make a difference you know uh, going into it on March 
two marches ago, you know, had we had, we all came into it with a sort of a different perspective, and with the pandemic, you know, a world has shifted, but I still feel like we are, um, you know, doing good things um, and doing, you know, really believe in what we're doing and doing the best we can, um, and I appreciate that. So, um, you know, last year on Zoom, I mentioned. That I actually made a cameo in the Big Lebowski. <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool, but I don't know how that compares to like comments yeah. with Whitney Houston. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like that kind of, we'll have to decide. You know, I think that, they're even. The Big Lebowski is the big one. It's pretty cool. To be in any any film, it, that that was pretty cool. Um, I, but one other thing though, and this was like feels like a lifetime ago, but um, I actually used to work for a television production company that. Um, and I was the head writer, um, and we wrote, uh, I, I wrote uh, a TV show that was about fly fishing around the world, and we actually won an Emmy. And what? Part of that team, so I think that's pretty cool. Kind that's of cool. very cool. I didn't know that. So just keeping in the uh, Hollywood theme, <laughs> we got to keep it there. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so I'm Bill Fraser, I'm the city manager. I've been in this role for 26 years. I've been in local government really since I got out of college, so closing in on 40 years. I've worked in Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, and Massachusetts. Um, obviously, 26 years in Vermont, and the rest of the time in the other states and five different communities. Um, I raised four kids here in Montpelier. Um, all went K to 12 in the school system. That was one of the reasons we stayed. Um, we came, and, you know, great place to raise the same reasons that you did. I'm originally a Maine native. My grandfather was a state legislator in Maine, so when I was a kid, uh, I got involved. Both my parents were educators, so dedicated to public service, and uh, just seemed to be something I was drawn to. I was a sort of a junior high kid during the Watergate era, so got hooked on politics and that kind of thing, and just uh, just pursued this. And uh, you know, like many, I see local government as a place where you can make a difference, and, and if you don't do it right, you hear about it, and, um, and I like that. It's, it's immediate and, uh, and all that. Fun fact, well, I was in the music business too, but only kind of around here um, for, for about 10 or 11 years. And I guess I met the Starline Rhythm Boys a few times. <laughs> That's about it. Jack used to be a groupie. <laughs> Still have a t-shirt, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, I played in the band for 10 or 11 years around here. So, oh, so. nice. I would love for our department directors who are here in person to just say their name and their department so that you can meet them all. Hi, Jennifer. We met yesterday. I'm Robert Gallins. I'm the fire chief. Hello, Kelly Murphy, fire instructor. Blake Miller, Director of Planning and Community Development. Oh, you're not a department. He didn't work here, yeah. Did <laughs> <laughs> you say this? You don't work here? Okay. <laughs> he works for camera. He works for me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh you're attached to her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Allie Gellsworth, the Parks Director. All right, so thank you all for indulging us. I think that was really important. So what we're going to do next is really get into those higher level um, discussions. And it, I think this will be really fun because, like Bill said, we really want to begin with the end in mind. So that very top thing, what does, the, what does Montpelier look like if we've accomplished all our goals and we've set out to do what we've set out to do? <coughs> so again, the vision is the very top is what we're going to be talking about first. And that's the future state, what we're choosing to be, what our goals are. And so, again, this was sort of your vision from before. A lot of things you said were like, I want to be a great place to live, visit, work, and play, be a leader, be innovative for serving the community, a place where people want to be day and night. I think that one's a really important one. Um, and so we're going to spend exactly 15 minutes sort of <laughs> going to set a timer, because tonight's going to get lengthy, I think. But I'd really like for um, either your choice. You can either round robin it or we can just shout things out. I think whatever works. Yeah. 
Can I ask a quick question? Of and course. I don't want to upend things. In no, you're fine. And if, if we can adapt, that'd be great. But if, if it's too much, then don't worry about it. But having gone through this process with a lot of organizations and brands over the years, <laughs> it's always been about kind of working your way up the pyramid, mm -hmm. not working from the top down. Because I think conversation, it's really easy to think about details and weeds and get or get in the weeds and think about how things will actually happen without, it, you know, like if you if you start too high and then work down, like to me, working our way mm -hmm. up that pyramid, talking about what our values are, and then deciding like, okay, then given the, the values, what what can we then leave there and then figure out what's our mission then, and then from there. It's what's our vision, which is really that top of the pyramid, right? Because it's so I would I would sort of I, I mean it's up to y'all what you want to do, but I would sort of argue that a little bit to say if you if you don't know where you want to even go, if you have no idea, and what we're creating is just initiatives like projects that we like and want to move forward to get to that vision, I think we're doing ourselves a disservice. If we, if we say, I want Montpelier to be a great place to live, work, and recreate, <coughs> point blank, how are we going to get there? Then that helps us build goals. If the goal is I want to be a good place, and I'm making all this up, by the way. Don't <laughs> quote me on any of these things uh, as far as vision statements. But if your vision statement is I want wow, Montpelier <laughs> sorry, to be a place to live, work, and recreate, how do we become a good place to live? We need affordable housing. We need more housing. How do we get more housing? If we want it to be, if I'm using that quote as the continued vision statement, how do we make it a place where people feel safe to recreate? Um, so that's public safety. That's our parks and rec infrastructure. So um, you know, I'm not sort of asking y'all to be in the weeds on this. Just honestly, if you could look at me and say, Montpelier would be great and perfect if it was x, and this statement encaptures that. I think that would really help us while we're talking about those goals. Because if we know where we want to end up, it might be easier to talk about the goals and how to get to there. Um, Y'all are free to disagree with me, and we can move <laughs> back and into the goal conversation first. But I do think that there is value in talking about the, the end goal. And it, it could be honestly aspiration. You could say, I want there to be more houses than people. Like, honestly, that we can put that in there. That could be a vision that we are just putting in there and putting in the room, right? Um, so I'd love to hear feedback if that's something that you guys are amenable to or, or, or what steps you wanted like to take. Well, I mean, I've already expressed my advice. I, I think the vision is where you have to go to, de to decide anything else. But that's just where I'm coming from. And like you, I'm a lot older. We've gone through a lot of these, and you know, there's lots of ways to get there. But I just do feel that starting at the top and working down works better for me. That's all. Yep. Okay. There's one way in here too. I mean, again, at least our training was always start with the why, and then uh, sort of how and when and whatever. <laughs> I want to be clear: we're not going to ask you to draft a vision statement tonight. Mm -hmm. We're just going to brainstorm some ideas of where you see my pillar going, we're going to write them all down, and then we'll come back and draft So we're not going to spend a lot of time in the weeds of wordsmithing something, because that would that could take us all night. Yeah. And the same thing with mission. We just want to get so that you're thinking about what the big foundation is, where we're going, and then we want to get right to the substance as soon as we can. Right. Which is why. Yeah, and, and I'm totally fine with that. Okay. I'm not trying to upend it. I appreciate it. By, by, by any means. But I, I also appreciate that um, sometimes it's sometimes it's hard to establish a vision if you haven't figured out your mission and your values first. Mm -hmm. And so it, we can start there, but work our way backwards. But I just don't, you know. I think that's fair. Then let's, then, you know, let, I mean, ultimately it's about conversation and then mm -hmm. distilling down, right? Right. So uh, honestly, we could start in, in any direction. But True. I think that was also. I just want to make sure we're keeping it in mind what our goals are. Definitely. And I think that is where we're going to get to eventually in this and that hopefully this is just a brain opening exercise and um, anything that we talk about tonight is being recorded and we, we're going to we're writing it down we're going to go back and all of this none of this is going to be left on the drawing board right all of this will be coming back to you in one way or the other so i'm going to write vision here 
and I'm going to not spell things correctly. <laughs> and <laughs> it's a test. It's a test for us. Uh -huh. uh, and we're not going to call me out on it. That's what, it That's what it's going to happen. So I will type it, and spell check will help us. So I'm going to set a timer, and um, we'll sort of get started. So if you had a vision statement, and what would it be? Or if you had a vision in 2031. Yeah. Uh, all students, no, I'm um, sorry. All, nope. there's, there is affordable child care available for all children from birth till uh, through high school. Throw it out there. That the city takes a role in human services, not only child care, but that they're making partnerships with nonprofits and the state to really have a, a holistic approach to people's quality of life. And to me, that it's child care, that's anyone who's homeless, it's mental health, it's drugs, it's all of it. Our city is an affordable place for working families. What about safety? Montpelier is a safe place for communities of color. that the, the rivers that run through our city are part of our day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. And our parks. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about businesses? So we're talking a little bit about um, people coming here. There's a safe place for a community. Would to maybe talk about our businesses as well, our business community that sparked anything for anybody? Well, before we get to that, I want to say the city is welcoming and affordable to everyone who wants to live here. City is a, an attractive place for socially responsible businesses. So when you say that, what do you mean? Um, I don't think regulations are bad necessarily, but we want to attract not just businesses, but businesses that pay a livable wage, are environmentally responsible. Mm -hmm. Don't just try to milk the resources of the town and treat their work as well. Montpelier to be a really fun place to live. Yeah. <laughs> Whether that's like, no, that's a vision. Like festivals or mm -hmm. spaces. Or <clears throat> Being somebody who grew up in a very large city and then moving to a very small city, um, the things that happen here, like Valentine's Day, the Valentine's Day Bandit, and the father daughter dance, and all those little things that happen here is what made me fall in love mm. with Montpelier. Is, all Species Day and having more things like that because that really feels unique to Montpelier and unique to Vermont and small towns, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to do right now, but. <laughs> yeah. I want Alex's vision of our like 
outdoor rat pub that we draw people. <laughs> oh boy. Good. Good. I heard Alex Vision Outdoor Recreation as what? As a hub. A place, uh, a destination people come to play and eat and Destination and hub. Uh, I would add that we have uh, an engaged and informed constituency. Mm -hmm. And so I think that starts another point is how do you, what is your ultimate vision for how people engage with government? Because if we're doing our job right, where does that take us? What is that vision? I thought the how would be the another step, not yeah. within the vision. The vision is to have them engaged. I didn't think at this stage we would talk about how we would do it. Correct. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I guess I meant like, are people are people engaged? Well, never mind. I'll not even go down that path. We're just moving on from that path. All right. <laughs> well, I, I have something to add to that. Mm -hmm. um, that we are communicating via multiple channels and methods to the public mm -hmm. and be accessible. looks really good I think there's some things I see that may be missing is like I think Anne spoke a little bit to this for child care but I think that ties directly into like the health of our community um, if anyone has any ideas off of that you can also talk about some of our roads or other infrastructure mm -hmm. safe community some of them thinking of some of our bigger um, uh, services here for the city we want to be maintaining and improving our our city infrastructure. All of our our multimodal <laughs> infrastructure, right? Well, or not. I wasn't thinking of it necessarily just in terms of in, in, uh, transportation, but yeah, because that's okay. another part of it. Yeah. So I'm also hearing multi. <coughs> yes, buildings, all of it. Yeah. Modal transportation. And maintaining and improving our infrastructure. Well, and maybe we should have the word green in here. Yes. Yeah. And maybe that's covered somewhere else. But when he mentioned infrastructure, as far as buildings, operations being more energy aware. Right. Yeah. If we get an energy star, it could be a city with an energy star. Yes. Energy, water quality, yep. and the stormwater. Yep. Plan we're talking about. Yeah. So storm water up here with our clean, yeah. safe water, including our storm water. I don't know how to. I'm still struggling with the words on this one, but um, something about uh, public safety systems that are. Um, compassionate but also effective and um, trusted what was your other word trusted compassionate, compassionate. effective <clears throat> City government should be a desirable place to work, and we should give our staff the resources they need to succeed. Separate thing. 
Oh, using like ADA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would also, uh, you know, our, our website, our communications, I think that also plays a big role in accessibility yeah. here. Oh, the mode and cost. Sorry, say that again. There's, there's accessibility dealing with mode, mm -hmm. like reading or not reading, not speaking, as well as not moving in, in the ways we can access a building. But it's, I think it's also cost, like running for city council. I mean, mm -hmm. it, we've all talked about that our stipend is not enough to allow many people to run. Mm -hmm. yeah. Taking time off to take advantage of some of the public meetings, just mm -hmm. as a, an active citizen, it's difficult. So I'm hearing making city engagement or city engagement is for definitive vision statement in here is accessible and doable for all. Killed this pen. <laughs> <laughs> making sure that there are support services for folks that are experiencing homelessness. Making sure that people that work downtown have access to mental health first aid mm -hmm. training. Um, I don't want to cut you off. Either. No. Um, uh, disaster readiness. Mm -hmm. We are disaster ready. This looks good. I'm excited about this. Y'all filled up a bunch of paper. <laughs> it's not even 15 minutes. No, not yet. Good. Probably close. <laughs> Just <laughs> to get out. <laughs> 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 we got a long night. <laughs> we don't have to fill the 50. No, you don't. No, that's what I was saying. Let's go to the next one. We'll spend more time on that one. Okay. <laughs> Does everyone feel pretty good about these vision statements that we've gotten to? Yep. Okay. So now we're going to, I mean, you were really close. There was only a couple seconds left, but. Oh, shoot. I know, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so the now it's are... known for taking all the time it can. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're also just going to skip right ahead to talking about more of what a mission statement is. So I, I want to hear from you, and I think that this is important as staff, to say why are we doing what we're doing. Right, so these are all the things that you said are the end goal, right? So why do we exist? What are, what are those goals that you do have? Um, this is time to start thinking about those goals. Like Jay was saying, you know, you're starting to understand what we even do as a government. What is our role as government in this community? So role statements work here. Um, statements about why government is important, what you think we do best, and what you think even if you say, I want to improve on X, Y, and Z, that also goes well here if, if you're interested. So um, it also can talk about our target audience, too. We serve who? What do we do and who does it serve? So it's a little, it's slightly different. Um, but you can see uh, this is our current mission statement, which is serving Montpelier with integrity is our craft. This is a very internal one, but it is in your handbooks as well. And craft is our values of staff, of competence, respect, accountability, fairness, and teamwork. Now, to be uh, frank, that's not quite a mission statement um, because it doesn't really hit on the core points of why we're doing what we're doing and who we hope to serve doing what we're doing. But it does, I think, highlight some of those values that we had been talking about earlier. So um, again, I think we're going to only spend about 15 minutes sort of like hashing out what we think our mission is, and I'm going to just hand these off to yeah. When we did our new logo, we did at that time. We did the branding a, statement. A branding statement. Is that around? I yeah, really it's, in, like it's it. in your handbooks. It's right at the beginning of your handbooks. Um, okay. I didn't bring my handbook with yes. me. Okay. There you First go. Remember, Morton's prepared. <laughs> <laughs> And um, That's the whole thing about the Yes, 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 yes. I really liked it. 
And once we're done with this, we'll take our first break, and then we're going to head right into goals, and it will be way longer than 15 minutes. So. Timer is set. Let's go. Did you find it? That's an older version. So. The branding statement? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Maybe she wants Okay, mission. <laughs> So maybe let's start with why. Why Montpelier government? Why do we exist? Why do y'all exist? What is your role? What if I like something like our success is reflected in how we treat our most vulnerable residents? That's good. And you don't need to craft statements necessarily, but why why are we, why is the government, why are we here? Why is What's council here? What is our role? role? We treat. What do we do? Well, we're in service, right? So we're serving our, our local community. Mm -hmm. Liaisons. <laughs> Maybe think about actual functions of city government. What are, what are things, what's yeah, our so mission? What do we do? Yeah, what are we serving our local community? We could say things like safe roads. So, what does safe roads lead to? Safe travel leads to economic development, right? Because people mm -hmm. can go to their jobs. That's an example. So what else are we serving our local community? We're trying to create <coughs> conditions in which people can thrive. Mm. Safely. I guess <laughs> thriving is, is safe is a yeah. thriving, okay. That includes <coughs> moving here and having housing, mm -hmm. being able to up, uh, create and operate businesses and work in those businesses, uh, raise their families. <coughs> Access local resources. Enjoy, enjoy the uh, natural resources, yep. So it would be, I'm leading the witness here, but so it would, <laughs> would uh, I'm, I'm leaving the witness. I'm looking at Alex. So, with providing some of those resources for, you know, is that a role to provide parks and recreation facilities for people to have fun and to be? Is that something we do? Is, yeah. is that part of our mission? Yeah. We serve our guests, right. yeah. as well as making the location and in, in inviting to guests. I mean, so it's and inviting. And how do we get there? And how do we get there is sort of how we're going to get into that goal conversation. So, so again, we're working our way down that pyramid, right? So we're going to relate to some of this when we talk about how do we create an inviting community? Is that through parks? Is that through good roads? So what else, what else are these overarching things that we serve our community? Why do we exist? What is our role? What do we do? Sorry if I'm being redundant here. I'm yeah, just trying to look through, it. but but it's leveraging our um, local business and natural resources to make Montpelier a um, inviting destination to live and play. To to, to and live in, not to visit, to play and to live. Because I think you know tourism is a big part. Leveraging that those pieces to. Uh, promote tourism certainly helps, it, it, you know. It's, oh, no, I totally agree with you. I just was inserting yeah. that not only visit us, but also yeah. live here. That's yeah. all. That's yeah, all. Yeah. Totally agree. I, I think to some extent, as a state capital to be a, a model community for the rest of the state. Oh. That's good. 
that's good. Well, when you say model community, I'd probably pile on everything we just said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not as altruistic. I want it to be good for me, and then if we're a model, great. <laughs> so, well, I think that, that you're competitive, huh? You're Connor, I, I, think, I think that part of that though <laughs> is is that as the capital uh, that we ex accept a, a, a leadership role in the state. Mm. Yeah, and, no, and fair play. <laughs> I think that that's, you know, I think that that's important when, in what we're, do what we're doing, yeah. You know, I don't know if that's true of all capitals. Some capitals, I think, are much more, I think, called passive. Yeah. And they sort You're of right. take all the advantages of being the capital, yeah. but they don't have the assertiveness that I think Montpelier has sort mm -hmm. of gotten into. Which I is a real difference. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I'm trying to push you. Let's let's think a little bit of what we do. All right. So we've talked about these are all, honestly some of these are still great vision statements, mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that. So what is it the city does? Like what's our mission? What, why why is there a charter? Why are city governments formed? What what are the we've got that survey? What do we what, what survey? I know it seems obvious, but. We, we provide public safety services, services yeah, right? Yeah. Public safety, we provide education, not the city. Yeah. Road, yeah. utilities. Water and sewer service. Yeah. Yeah. These are all core missions that we do. Like sort of be a place you enjoy in the best of times with like what Jennifer was saying, mm -hmm. but also in your like most devastating times, know that we're there for you, like chief shop there. Like, if you have a health crisis or something, mm -hmm. we're going to be their responsible for you. But, but that takes an organized entity. So mm -hmm. the entity has to be really organized within itself right. and yeah. take pride in its staff and its mm -hmm. council and all of its committees. So that without that organized body you can't do all these other things so i don't know how to put that in there but it seems like it's needed yeah. we keep track of you know give or take 20 million dollars of public money yeah. mm -hmm. and records oh my so, so that's important that's yeah. a trust and accountability piece that we have to do yeah it's a, there's a um one of the functions would be like stewardship of public goods yes, yes. yes. It, which I includes like the words. roads includes the water mm -hmm. yes <clears throat> But also, I think there's a stewardship of um, just public resources in general, which, you know, I think also. And that's some of maybe our planning and our regulations, right? We, that's right. how we do some of that is through our. Right. And I think there is something to, I'm oh, sorry, I'm saying a couple things here in a row, but um, there's something about facilitating the democratic process. Like, mm -hmm. we're, mm -hmm. you know, we, that, this is why we talked about uh, engagement. Like, we want people to be. Engaged and informed, and um, and participating. We conduct elections that people can trust the outcome. They, mm -hmm. they trust the process, and Integrity. many people as possible can participate. Mm -hmm. We keep land records and assessing records. <laughs> and so you know, those don't show up on visions, but it's part of good government, right? It's like the people to make sure we're taxing people on a fair basis, and people can look at their deeds. And, Mm -hmm. That's our responsibility. That's part of our mission. Provide a whole range of public services in an in excellent and uh, professional and responsive way. Mm -hmm. you know, we That's also carry what our community members are talking to us about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Certainly the elected bringing officials, that, absolutely. Yeah. Bringing those, right. those concerns and needs from our community members that we represent to yeah. the table, giving them voice. So receptive and responsive to the voice of the voices of the community. Mm -hmm. At the same time, leading. <clears throat> and there's, there's both. One's it's responsive and one's saying, right. we're the also going to lead, like the energy and the green, right. and then pulling constituents <laughs> with us sometimes. Well, you think about but your that's service. leadership. Yeah. You've got your vision and you're trying to get your yeah. external authorizing yeah. environment to line up yeah. and then build the resources to do it. So I would also say you're saying that we need to have those resources, right? So ensuring those resources are available. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And planning for them. Mm. It's at sustainability. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Planning is important. We're mm. uh, entrusted by the voters with the present and future of the city.
them something about the accountability to ensure that public dollars are spent well? Do y'all feel good? Yeah. Lots robust. There's one word I just <laughs> haven't heard, and maybe others. Somehow, is that respectfully engage? Um, I think that's important. Oh, be quiet, Donna. <laughs> 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 Lots of luck in that. <laughs> Again, <laughs> I got his chair. <laughs> you know, he's a big guy and doesn't move. I still don't mess with Donna. <laughs> so as you think about it, you've talked about kind of where you want, big picture, where you want to see us go, and then we talk about how we do, you know, what we do, what the government's role is, and then so then your next, as we go into the next step, will be to talk about how we take what we do to start moving to where we want to be because you know, again it kind of goes to can't be all things to all people so how can we use what, what we have the authority to do and the ability to do. And again we'll come back with drafts so yes yeah, but even if this I mean this ultimately is going to be reduced to sentences but to name some of these things just livens them up it's mm -hmm. really good yeah. well it's good and it's good for you to be thinking part yeah. of it is to get you what sorry one of the ways that I'm thinking about this is like I'm just actually just going through the departments in my head like what is the mission so, you know, I, I mean I, I'm not really the one to say like what the mission of that department is but like letting those like letting departments and sort of inspire some of these statements and um, one that I feel like could be more represented here is, um, is actually the Community Justice Center. And I know we said public safety, but something about providing a space for, oh, maybe this is, I, I don't know what the right phrase is. I think, you know, some regards you covered, you talked about respectfully engaging. Yeah. You talked about people feeling, you know, safe to be here. People, you know, I think that's mm -hmm. a lot of what they do is. But it'd be nice somehow to mention mediation and social. Yeah. Yeah, or like justice center. So again, you're gonna get they'll have they're all gonna have a chance to put to weigh into all of mm -hmm. this. So again, and to develop their department priorities yeah. based on what they're learning the right. communities. You know, in a sense, I feel like they facilitate difficult conversations. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like that's. I think the only uh, department I haven't heard really yeah. talked about at all is, is maybe our senior center and aging oh, in place. Yeah. Sure. You know, y'all, we do have a, an aging population yeah. in town. I think they're covered in a lot of this. I think the accessibility is really important. Um, there's certainly an aging community here, too. Well, there is certainly an element of, like, providing resources. You know, I'm thinking about, like, the Meals on Wheels program, mm -hmm. um, Feast, or whatever. Yeah. <coughs> That's a... I mean, we often don't provide a lot of services like that, but that that is a role we that we talked about in, in the vision about making things fun and affordable and yeah. some of those things. So, Ooh, the thunder beams the coffee. But when I see the senior center like the <laughs> child care and like issues of homelessness go back under that partnership with the city, state, and nonprofits, and mm -hmm. and really doing more with that, that we can integrate that more thoroughly. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things you didn't talk about, just this, I wish I thought of this when you were talking about the vision, and I'm not trying to push you to talk about this. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and push. Don't <laughs> <laughs> condition it, Bill, just say it. Well, no, we didn't talk about whether we wanted the city to grow, to say, you talked yes. about what yeah. was great about the city. Oh, yeah. But you didn't, do we see it as being a larger city, approximately the same size, or do, do we see it being more residential, more, you know, I mean, we didn't, so I, and I know some of that's going to come up when we do the city plan. But it's just kind of interesting. We talked a lot about the character of the city, but not actually what it yeah. might look or feel like uh, in terms of. I think that's a great point. I, I, my vision for what the city is like, it includes growth, 
including more people coming here, more people being able to come here, consistent with our, or within, within the constraints of our, uh, sorry, <laughs> within the constraints of our uh, infrastructure, we could still support uh, more people than we have now. If we could easily go to 10,000 people, then it would still be recognizably what it is now. 20,000? I don't know. 10,000? Definitely. Okay, so 10,000 is our mark. <laughs> if you're the 10,000, you can't do that. <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's a vision, I, I, I would say we can, yeah. we can envision our city growing to a population of 10,000 because then we can think about what we can take or, or not. I'm not trying to push that. I don't say growth just for the sake of having a goal of growth. No, I understand, but, but we'll get into but, that when yeah. we talk about the specifics. But just yeah. is that a vision that we see this as a grow, you know, a, a place with more people living here in ten years or twenty years? Yeah. Okay. First. Part of that to me is like also like people of all ages and yeah. like a mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. diverse demographic. Yeah. Assuming we meet all the other people. <laughs> yes. No, no, that was it. I mean, that's. Yep. 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 I made a separate vision board for that. We're good. Caught it. <laughs> we need more hummus divers. <laughs> so we have been talking. It is now 8 o'clock, so it is break time. Huzzah. And then we're going to jump right into goals, and that will take us through the rest of the evening. How long do you want us to take for a break? Five, ten minutes. Five, ten. Call me. Yeah, I don't know. Well, how long do you, I mean, usually we go ten. Is ten too much? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to get into sort of the meat of, of what I'd like to do today, but I really think we're going to get you out of here by 10 at least, or less, greatest, whatever. We're going we're gonna to manage this. So what we're going to be talking about now is really the goals. And so y'all have already established goals in our previous um, strategic planning processes. But goals really are that how do we prioritize city funds? It answers where do we want to be and what are uh, what we want to do and what we want to accomplish as a city. Ooh. So that's a fun backdrop, not scary at all. So <laughs> a lot of this we really do want to align with the city plan. Um, eventually that is the goal, is to feed these annual strategic plans that y'all are creating into our larger infrastructure of the city plan. Um, there can be as many or as little overall goals that council would like, but know that everything can't be an immediate priority. So that's something to keep in mind while you're Shoot. talking about these. <laughs> 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 so what we're really talking about is short-term, medium, and long-term goals. So um, short-term goals are those low-hanging low fruits or quick wins that are pretty short in time period, two to three months. Those are what I suggest that you don't focus on because those are actions. Those are things that we can do to support your goals, right? If they're that easy to accomplish, chances are we're already working on them, to be perfectly frank. The planned sweet spot, to me, term um, goals that sort of can be accomplished in three months to three years, right? These are the things that you can see us with prioritization of budget getting done sooner than our city plan tie-in, which is where we want to eventually get y'all is these plans not only feed into what you see as priorities for that year so we can be quick and responsive as a community, uh, as an organization to, to serve our community, but to also tie into our long-term goals that are being created right now through our planning department in partnership with community outreach, all of your committees, et cetera. So we're really creating a pyramid of our own with plants. So it's pretty exciting to me, but um, you know, you don't have to take my advice on this one at all, throw out whatever you want, but I do believe that our plan sweet spots are that three month to three year time, front, time window. So, these are your six current strategic plan goals. These are the six things out of the nine, I believe you have, that were included in your strategic plan because these are what a majority of you voted were most important for last year. So this is what we spent our time and our prioritization on for the last um, strategic plan. That included community prosperity, COVID-19 response, which gets back to my point about these being quick, responsive plans, um, responsive and responsible government, sustainable infrastructure, environmental stewardship, and more housing. 
So the things that you also had, because remember, we, you do have more goals than just that, but the ones that didn't rise to that priority level for you included inclusive, equitable, and engaged community, thoughtfully built plan, thoughtfully <coughs> planned built environment, and public health and safety. When I say that they were not prioritized in your strategic plan, I do not mean that they were not important. So I think that's another thing that we got to get um, to. All of these goals carry equal weight. And so this year we're sort of asking you to come up with all of this huge list and then at the end vote for the th three things you think will be most impactful for this year. We as staff, and we're just asking that you can say this is a bad idea, you don't want to do it, that's fine. But this many of high priority um, goals were difficult to prioritize budgeting around, right? Especially in the time of COVID. COVID-19 was pretty much our number one focus and had a lot of our, our funding going to that um, in a time where we didn't have a lot of funding, right? So all of these things were competing to your highest priority. So um, hope, my goal, and again, pushback uh, where needed, is to have your council strategic plan goals be three, high priority, and then the rest of everything that you come up with, right? Yep. yep, go for it. And so one of the other things that we, I think might be helpful as we think about these <coughs> things, would be to look at these goals and think about them in terms of maybe adding an action verb on them. So, um, like we say, sustainable infrastructure. Well, are we are we um, maintaining it? Or are we trying to get there? You know, what, what's our what's our action verb? Are we, you know, completing? You know, because because those also uh, have different sense of severity. So, um, you know, are we encouraging more housing? Are we going to you know, and, w and then think about not in the, maybe the title of the goal, but think, you know, more housing could be 100 new McMansions or it could be affordable, you know, say a range of housing. So I think as we get into the, the strategies below them, we need to think about being clear about what they mean. I mean, we, we figured these all out and they all have statements to go with them, but just as we think about maybe uh, having clear things. And then I think just to set the stage, are you already going to talk about strategies? Uh, we were going to get there. I know, but I just wanted to, so people are thinking. Ahead. Yeah, yeah, sure. So the, the next stage that would come after this would be strategy. So I'm just going to pick on, say, um, responsive and responsible government. So, so we say we want to have a responsible or maintain a responsible. So strategies might be maintain transparency, excellent communication, um, treat our workers well, um, you know, whatever else they might be, good fiscal management, those kinds of things. That's your strategies. We'll come back and say, then here's some activities that would support those, and that's when pet projects and you know, like the new website or something that where that could go. So we'll give some time at the end of the meeting to throw out ideas for actions and projects. But then our staff's going to meet next week with what you come up with for goals and strategies, and recommend you know put together what, how we think we can accomplish them, and then you'll get a chance to look at that and say, you know, we either like these or we don't, or we'd rather substitute this or whatever. So just so people are thinking the level you are at tonight. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. Can I back up just a minute? Because yes. I always associate the action verb with the strategy and not the goal. And I know we constantly, but, which is which. Well, but, the goal is. But, but so, but whoa, whoa, just to go back, when you said that you want us to add action verbs, but you also added, you wanted us to add action verbs that lended to a sense of priority. Well, what I, I just mean is, um, you know, let's say like more housing. Are we facilitating more housing? Are we building more housing? Or are we just are we just creating more housing? I, I, you know, I, I thought they came under strategy. Okay, okay. Well, what it, no, no, correct me. I'm just trying to, yeah. you know. I guess the I goal is what are we trying to do? And then the strategies are what are the types of things we would do to get there? And then we talk about initiatives and actions and what are the specific things that it would take to meet okay. those. As long as the ideas get down, we'll take it from there. So mm -hmm. I, yeah. I don't want you to get hung up on not sharing ideas just because So the questions that we're posing to you tonight are, do those goals that we just listed, these ones, still feel appropriate? Do they still resonate with you? What would you like to change about them? Or uh, would you like to add, take away, morph, etc.? cetera? Um, these are the other plans that we've got going on. Just I just don't want them to be forgotten in our ultimate goals. Um, I know a lot of y'all sit on these committees that have come up with some of these plans. So um, this could be sort of those actions that we start talking about too. 
is make sure the downtown master plan or the net zero plan um, that's a strategy to create what we had earlier which is the goal of environmental stewardship right we just want to keep those in mind while we're moving forward that those do exist and we don't want to be in conflict with those so that's something that staff will also be looking at to give you the sort of initiatives to uh, accomplish your goals we'll be looking at these as well so our goal for tonight is brainstorming new or continued ideas for your fiscal year 2023 strategic plan goals so uh, this can take as little or as long as you would like I'm going to keep it on this slide while we talk about it so you already kind of know what your goals are um, I'd be, I think this one I think uh, you know the homework assignment was to think of these so I think people have come with lists so instead of just free yelling them maybe we'll just go in a circle free yelling, free yelling. I, guess, I guess I'm feeling like there's a lot of different things on the on the radar right now mm -hmm. one one task that I feel like I heard was come up with action verbs for these well, strategies so you do decide, not have to okay yeah, no, no, no 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 okay. first decide if those are the goals you want okay. and then just how you state them is right, right. that was important. the second thing I heard was which of these things are your top three and the third thing I heard was like of the lists of like the the like actiony things that like I hope that we do you know like what are they right um, do you so what what I would like to do for this part of this is for us to and y'all to brainstorm any new things that you'd okay. like to add to this I will be writing them down okay. and then we'll be writing down these ones and then we're going to be putting sticky dots next to them so we'll just discuss and decide if right. you think they still resonate or, or what or whatever ones. a voting process yeah. will go through them right because I think we yeah. could come up with like 40 goals if we right. sat around and thought about it um, we just want to make sure that they're they all represented all well, so also I just want to jump in with the, I feel like we could potentially get weighed down with the verb like okay. that. Yeah, let's not worry about the verb. Yeah. Because we'll, we'll, we'll put verbs, we'll suggest verbs. Yeah. Let's take that out. Yeah. That's, that's um, not even a thing. We'll worry about the verbs. <laughs> responsive and responsible government to me and likewise thoughtful plan build belongs in sustainable infrastructure mm -hmm. and, and mm. many okay. people don't want them more condensed but to me that seems that they they, they sit there and literally responsive and responsible government also includes public health and safety but maybe you don't want to reduce them. so just for background the goal, this, this group was, I think, initially done three years ago when we first had Julia here and yep. the council yep. sat at that time, yep. and then we've kind of stuck with them since then and just modified them a little bit. So part of it is, okay, it's three years later, we've got some difference in the council. Is this still where you want to be? Um, so, so I think that's it. You know, you're not, you're not weighed down by a prior group's decisions unless you choose to be. Secondly, um, so the, there is a slight difference. Somebody else asked me about this today. So thoughtfully planned built environment really was intended to mean you know, buildings in the public, so whether it was our planning projects or, or I think at the time, of course, the hotel and parking garage were, were part of that thinking, you know, things that the city builds, are they meeting the look and feel of the community versus sustainable infrastructure, which had to do, are our roads going to last for a long time? Are they, you know, climate resilient are they so it was it was sort of our own water and sewer pipes and our drains and those kinds of things so they were they were intended to be separate things they don't have to be but that's they really weren't the same thing and and I think at least at the time I think maybe it was council member Hill at the time that really wanted the inclusive equitable and engaged community separated out and that's ultimately what led to the social justice committee and the, the master plan I know I was around at that time. Yeah, I know but, I, was, but, I was partly doing this yeah. review for everyone else too. Yeah. But like the sustainable infrastructure, as Jack reminded me, we're talking about buildings as well as roads, and the buildings and the infrastructure is also our parks and our riverways, things that we want to do the right way. Mm -hmm. So that's why I would suggest those first two get moved over. The third maybe keep it by itself, but that's just a 
suggestions. Nope. The group can vote on it. However you all want to do it. So just to be clear, sorry, um, you're suggesting that thoughtfully planned built environment be a part of sustainable infrastructure. Sustainable infrastructure. Okay. That, that when I, then the broad sense of infrastructure, anything we build and maintain, parks. So I guess, again, anything. just to make sure we're clear, the thoughtfully planned built environment also had to do with things that the city didn't build, like private buildings right. and our zoning and planning. So. So that's not the same as city buildings, the infrastructure that we build. So yeah, if you I want to lump those together, that's fine, but it's just, they were meant to be slightly different. Right, like I think of the thoughtfully planned built environment, the emphasis being on planned, which in my mind is about the planning department. So you could also change that. I mean, that could be another yeah. goal. Yeah. It's like, it's okay. it's planning, planning. I, I, as something separate, like um, sustainable planning, planning that fits our community like that could be another goal entirely right so you, you were not wed to these yeah. by any means um, you know we're doing ongoing work in these buckets right but the, the, the like just as Bill is described in the iceberg a lot of that work is not necessarily the things that are going to be aligning with your goals are just necessary work to, to complete our jobs right and so the things that we're trying to get you to, to, to think about here are these like larger goals. If the goal of thoughtfully planned built environment really sticks to you with that planning, maybe the goal should be renamed or reimagined to fit things more like, um, you know, refining our planning processes or a goal should be, um, you know, planning as a response to community need or whatever floats your boat in this circumstance, you know? So, um, I'd love to, you know, if you have uh, other, I'm just sort of rambling here, and but if you <laughs> had anything that you were going there with that, um, the word, yeah, no, that's fine. I, I was just going to say, the reason I combine them is I think a, the golds are like having a red thread and a purple thread and a blue thread, and that everything that comes after those will also have predominantly that goal in mind, mm -hmm. whether it's the private owned building or the city building, that there's an assessment going on that's going to have this one color <laughs> thread of a goal going through it, even though it has <laughs> many different departments or strategies. I just find having as many goals we've had as to be not, I can't grasp them. It's like I read the list every time and I say, really? <laughs> So I'd like to simplify our goals so that we have this thread going through all the stuff that then becomes strategies. Mm -hmm. well, that That's just that, me. That leads up to, right to what I was going to say, maybe, which is, as, <laughs> as, I, as I look at this list now, thoughtfully planned built environment, I'm not sure exactly what it means, yeah. but, uh, yeah. but the other thing I think is that uh, rather than being or I, I'll go back and say that when we went through this the last time or the last couple of times, one of the elements of this was there are certain things that city departments and city staff are gonna gonna do just because that's what they do, even if we don't say <laughs> this is our priority. You yeah. know, we don't have to tell the uh, fire department that your goal is to put out <laughs> fires. <laughs> that's, that's, that's good. Because they do that. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's the center of those concentric circles. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I think of thoughtfully planned built environment, you know, this the planning department and uh, and the planning commission and all the departments are already engaged in producing, working on producing the components that are going to go into the uh, master plan. Mm -hmm. And so, and that is, you know, zoning ordinances, master plan, mm -hmm. all that stuff is what we do to develop a thoughtfully planned built environment. So I'm suggesting maybe we all need that to be one of our goals. Mm -hmm. That's just, mm -hmm. that's more a core function of city government than a goal for the council. So you think we need to get more specific um, in terms of goals? Or well, no, I'm, I'm just saying strike that off the list because okay. if, right. if we're going to have certain, there's only so much attention that we have to go along. Mm. Go around. 
Yep. And, and likely in the next year, you're going to be dealing with the, the new master plan, the city plan. That's going to be on your table desk probably, what, February, maybe March, somewhere in there. So, um, that, you know, some of your work in the next year will be looking at yeah. the master plan. Yeah, without, without saying that's going to happen whether you put it on the list or not. I think to like the extent this document is a communication to folks, it's important to set aside that like COVID-19 is still up here. Look around the room. We're all wearing masks. It's a worldwide pandemic. We had like a million dollars cut from our budget and there's nothing more personal than like a shot in the arm. So ensuring that everybody's, you know, safe and healthy during this worldwide pandemic, which has potential to go like past getting sick, but like, you know, break down supply chains, you know, find people out of work. It's kind of all encompassing. So I would just like kind of separate it from other stuff. It's like not necessarily business as usual, but just that's to communicate good. that to folks. It's so that's a good point. We actually talked about whether it needed to be on there, not because it's obviously not still an issue. But last year at this time when we were doing this, we were talking about what can we do to prop up our businesses and all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And that was before we do anything about PPPs and the loans and all these other things. Right. You know, it was, and I, so I think some of that's taking care of itself. <coughs> and then, you know, maybe the park. So, you know, I think we're, where it's really come down to us is sort of how we manage the safety rules for employees and, you know, and, and we kind of let the state set the big policy. So, you know, the question is do we need to spend? Is that something, when we talk about that three weeks of council work, is that right, something we're going to spend a lot of, obviously we're going to do this, but is mm -hmm. that part of your 125 hours to spend a lot of time on COVID-19 as a council? Or, or is, is that a public, you know, an activity under public health and safety that we will be making good decisions about? There's also the thing that a lot of what Bill and I talked about, the COVID-19 response, a lot of the things that are still ongoing under that. Um, you know that we saw in your uh, report on um, by the end of the year is is the economic development side of that. Right? Mm -hmm. How do we take advantage of those loans? How do we communicate those loans to our business owners? So to to me that that made a lot of sense. Is is some of the public health and safety part of it? Honestly, it comes down to y'all putting masks mandates into place. But the strategies for COVID nineteen all right now are around economic development, mm -hmm. right? which is what community prosperity used to be. Right. Is economic development and those words changed three years ago. I mean, it's just two thoughts on that. I mean, I do, so like we're pretty fortunate being able to say like through PPP and the expanded unemployment benefits and like some of that's drying up now. So, and you know, the pandemic is not ending anytime soon as far as we know. So I think we're still going to have to be prioritizing and it might shift like the, I think the federal programs are going to be changing and different opportunities and different state opportunities. So um, I, I still think something in that vein, I mean, part of it to me would be like, how are, how is Montpelier positioning itself to take advantage of the state COVID money? And um, so maybe COVID response could mean some different things this year than it meant last year where it was really, um, and I also hope, you know, so maybe Connor talked about the, Somebody talked about like uh, how we're more disaster ready, and you know, like what are the lessons learned? Like, okay, we, we mm -hmm. like had to stand up this response. We did, you know, there was like the the mutual aid groups and the this and that. And, like, what have we learned, and how are we capturing that so we're better prepared next time? Like, I hope that's part of what we're doing too. So to me, that would be like COVID, like readiness and learning. And <laughs> so just somehow, I think it still needs to be there, but I, mean, I think it'll look different this year. How do you feel about moving it at, into like a strategy under either public health and safety or community prosperity? Or would you rather it still remain out separate? You could say touches anything, right? Yeah, it, it could yeah, fit almost good. under anything. Yeah, that's why I'm just thinking yeah, like, of what we do. like don't take it out, but like yeah. almost yeah. highlight it, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it could be like a, a separate 
a lens almost that like things are happening through. It's like the, the context in which we're living. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, right, it's but, a lens, yeah. Um, so, I don't know, I just, okay. Anybody think we have there's a goal that's not on there that ought to be? If I had a proposal, I could make it fit under one of those things. Yeah. <laughs> no, no matter what, <laughs> I'd be telling you guys, ah, this fits exactly with like sustainable yeah, and infrastructure. I mean, I agree with that, and I feel like the wording, like I think more housing is like maybe our most. <laughs> like it's, and actually, uh, you only voted on housing last year. Right, we we just added, added the more the later. More. <laughs> 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 nice, nice, nice definition there. <laughs> like, to me, because I'm like, environmental stewardship, like, I mean, to me, it would be like a clean, healthy environment. Like, I'd, I'd rather make them things that mean something to people. Like, the same way we're like, we came up with these words. I was there when we came up with thoughtful plan, built environment, and no one knows what the heck it means. So that's not great <laughs> communication with the public. Um, so I almost think like either it's just, and I think maybe we even have like whole sentences describing We do have, we do, have, we do have yeah. sentences under like, each one. But like, and wanting them to be kind of short and sweet to like point to, but maybe like even staff thinking about, are there better ways to describe them? Like right. I work in the environmental field and like environmental stewardship, like I would just never say that phrase. Like I don't even know what that. Well, I mean, I'm not in that field and I relate to it as a more uh, relatable way of being careful of our resources and our energy and being green and access and all then of is that. Is it like a stormwater utility? All That's of kind that. of sustainable oh, infrastructure too. Yes. Like, I don't know. To me it's like just yeah. Well and it's less about, you know, at some point it's to get all the activities and what we put them under is you know, it's it's good to guide us, but sure you can split here as which one it goes right. under, but as long as it goes under. You know, I think that's what so that's where I was at with the verbs of sort of like is it promote environmental stewardship, practice environmental stewardship? Uh, engage in uh, support, you know, it, it all, they're just words, but they do kind of shade how we then set our strategies. It's just, you know. So, is there any terms that you would use about the environment that would satisfy? Well, I'm just thinking like more descriptive, like clean, healthy water and clean energy, or like, like what are we actually doing under that? Like, so let's just say strategies. what it is instead of just like broad stewardship. Uh, but I mean, maybe like I think that also might cover like our parks and yes. stuff. Yes, like, yes. You know, so, we're almost ready to um, go to strategy. You know, like I, so yeah, and I don't want to get into strategies, but I'm just no. But I think that's where you're headed. So I think I think once we hit there, we're gonna have a mother load. Yeah, of yes. maybe, maybe when we see our strategies, mother mother. Like, <laughs> like, our, yeah. I think almost for all of them, like. Well. So maybe we can do a straw poll. So I Honestly. thought we were going to list our three, no? Well, no. we're going to do those after you get the strategies. Okay. Yeah. Because some of those might want to know what's included. Sure. Right. Uh, so, 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 so maybe I can get like a good idea of where up, you're at with down. these. Yeah. Thumbs up and thumbs down on community prosperity. Okay. It's a majority <laughs> thumbs. COVID-19 response. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Am I only voting for three right no, now? No, no, no. You're voting for <laughs> Do they stay in or stay or Do you like them? In. Do you not? Yeah, okay. They don't, they don't, okay. There's no limit right now. Okay. All right. Maybe I'll restart then. Community prosperity. All right. COVID-19 response. Okay. we got question mark. I'm going to put a question mark there. COVID. <laughs> Because we respond to everybody else everything. when it comes to COVID-19. Yeah. Yeah. Responsive and initiate. responsible government. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. More housing. Yes. All right. Environmental stewardship, wordsmithing aside. What that means. <laughs> <laughs> Sustainable infrastructure. Uh, Inclusive, <clears throat> equitable, and engaged community. I put it over there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thoughtfully planned. We, 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 I don't know if we had. Did, were there th I didn't see all the thumbs. Where no, we no, no, we're here. Okay. And I'm, I was about to write it down because we didn't get a lot of thumbs, so I'm okay. going to put it in the question column. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm just going to write the word inclusive. I'm not going to write all that. Yeah. Sorry. Thoughtfully planned built environment. Oh, there are no thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's okay. Mike's going to do it. <laughs> 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 and public health and safety. Okay, so that that puts a couple um, ones up for for further conversation around. So, um, 
when we're looking at our COVID-19 response, there was maybe some hesitation because we feel like it could fall in other places, and that's fair. Um, you know, the way that we've been doing strategies around COVID-19, like Lauren says, there are grant readiness um, after action learning and our coop plans, right? So now we have to, and our local hazard mitigation plan, right? Under public health and safety, that's where all of those things are being captured. Like how we've done our, active, our after action, what uh, lessons we've learned, how we're integrating this into our coop plans, which is continue, I'm not, I'm, it's very late for me. I'm not gonna go into that. It's just a plan that we have for continuity of operations. See, I remembered. There we go. Um, and then, um, and then we also have that fitting in a couple different places as well. So, maybe, maybe you don't need the COVID nineteen one if you feel like it's accurately captured what you're looking for in your strategies in these goals. I agree with that. I think that uh, we're at this stage of the pandemic. We don't need to be setting policies at the council level for what we're going to do. We think, I think that we know what we're going to do, but and we put a lot of reliance on the professionals in the departments to make it happen and to do and to manage it well. And that takes it out of the council level category. And that definitely, again, doesn't mean that we're not going to be responsive to any changes. Those will immediately come to you all for your awareness. It just might mean that uh, some of the things that we had been putting money towards, like partitions and other things that aren't necessarily recommended anymore, that's not, uh, maybe you're saying that's not quite your priority for spending. So, mostly because we've, we've already spent that. I mean, I'd like it like conveyed in this document that mm -hmm. we're on top of COVID. Mm -hmm. yeah, and like, sure. I might be in the minority here. I don't trust the state always. I, I was proud when we came out before the state did with the mask mandate. Mm -hmm. I think they're wrong making each school district do this by themselves, and it's a school district decision. But I, I think that we will be, you know, assertive on our own here, not just rely on them. Is there a way to? But I think we'll we make the decision under our public health and safety decision led by staff. Could, but like, okay, when a bunch of people are laid off, you know, what are we going to do about COVID if it comes back again? You know, I think it touches everything so much that it deserves to be almost separate from this because it, it's almost a different train of thought as far as thinking into the future and, you know, roll with the punches with what COVID deals us next because we don't know. And I think that leads us to sort of our capacity and resources. Like, you yeah. know, obviously you can decide this, but in reality, we don't have the resources to sort of have our own unemployment subsidy program and those kind of things. Much as we think they would be great, <coughs> it sort of goes back to where's our mission, what's our capacity, what's, so how do we support these other programs and what, what can we do? I think we, we ran into that last year where we all were like, oh, we want to help all these businesses. And then it's like, we don't, where are we getting you know, millions of dollars from? But, but we did through the parklets, you know, we supported no, them in those right, ways, those you know. Were, yeah. Right, exactly. And I right. think those, so those are the kind of things. What I could envision, Connor, just to, to try to help you out here, is we develop our strategic plan and maybe in the introductory statement we can say, you know, we acknowledge that we are operating under, you know, in this pandemic era and that everything we do is colored by COVID-19. Mm -hmm. You know, just sort of put it up front. That satisfies my concerns, and, yeah. and, and, <laughs> well, and, and, you know, <laughs> and that's how I sort of feel about community prosperity is I feel like we touch it on all these other things. And that so, we don't have the staff or money to make. We're well, not an economic development. Right. Well, and I think but that's that's a question. You know, at one point, that was a high priority. And it was like I said, it was economic development activities, and then I think it got broadened to be well, it should be all prosperity for all people, which is fine. And how does that look? But at once upon a time, that was sort of the economic development, and yeah. you know, how much are we going to increase the tax? You know, what's our budget frugality? Right. And, and it, because that keeps us more affordable. So, yep. Um, so I think, but again, it's up to you how you want to. But that's why I didn't it. vote for it. And okay. that's why, or the COVA, I think they're integrated elsewhere. You know, and, and then you can decide if you want to change names of it too. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. let, me, let me ask a question about that. Because in, whether we call it community prosperity or economic development, we know, that for instance, the city worked really hard and spent a lot of time working with Caledonia Spirits to get them here and we and the city council voted to uh, devote uh, 
capital resources to making that happen. I don't know what the next thing like that is going to be, but I think that the city should be doing that kind of thing, whether it's something that should needs, needs council level policy or guidance is another question. Well, so I would say yes, that is definitely, you know, because when we come to do the budget, whether, you know, obviously we used to have a private nonprofit that did that down. We don't, so we've got to figure out how to go forward. We've, we've, that money's in abeyance right now because of COVID. But if we go forward, if that's a priority or a goal, then how are we going to implement that? Or is it something? You know, I mean, again, it tells us if, if that's not a top thing that the council wants to do, then we may just say, hey, go see the planning department. You're on your own. Or, hey, we in the city will step up to really help because that's something that's important. So, you know, we're allocating limited resources, too. But Bar, Bar Hill came to us, Caledonia Spirits came to us, and then, well, I mean, ultimately, they really did look at the flavor of Montpelier, and then Jamie put a lot of time, Jesse, uh, Jesse put a lot of time on that as assistant city manager, and that we, we decided to, to let her do that, dedicate that time, but but we weren't having a staff focused on doing just that. I think no, definitely your ears are open, but, a, but I think that's different than... If, but actually if we, we become our own that. economic development council, then we, we need to then look at staff. Are we going to dedicate right. a staff right. to that? Right. So Maybe. I'm saying yeah, it's indirect that if we do our due diligence as a government and a city, people will want to come here, and then we can look at each situation as they come up and say, now we'll dedicate more extra time for this. That's, I guess, how I feel about it versus yes. setting time aside now. Well, so we can get to with the strategies. I mean, right now I think... It's in, right? There were everyone else well, voted for it, right? For yeah. community partners. I don't know if Jay vote. voted, and I didn't see his thumb. <laughs> I just don't know what the. These are the only ones that <laughs> didn't have a majority. Right. Okay. Okay. So the question is, do we keep the wording, or? So maybe we we focus on these three again yeah. for right now. So. Um, you know, we talked about this. You came up with a lot of really great strategies and actions that can be put maybe under some other positions, unless you want to keep this one, like grant readiness, making sure that we're being leaders and assertive. With, and don't worry about wordsmithing these things. Making sure that we're we've got our after action plans. Um, we're tracking mandates. We're being proactive with mandates, etc. Supporting businesses with things like parklet programs. Um, so, and then I will also add our local hazard mitigation plan, which does talk about infectious diseases. So there's a few things there that I, you've talked about as strategies and actions that can fit under a whole host of things or still COVID-19 response, depending on how y'all feel. I so, like Bill's idea though, too. It's, I think that could be encompassed in a statement to kick this off. Mm -hmm. Okay. COVID. So otherwise, it would be under the public health and safety. It'll, it'll show some up of them will places. be, and some of them won't. So okay, like, but are, I mean, they'll be under the specific the, activities yeah. will show up where they belong. So things like grant right, readiness could be under community prosperity, um, uh, and these could be under public safety. The parklets and other supporting of small businesses could also be under community prosperity. Um, so there's a whole different host of places <coughs> that y'all want to keep that um, those things could find a home, yeah. no yeah. problem. So, COVID-19 as goal, thumbs up or down? Well, included a, as a preamble. Yeah. As, right, as without, without, like just as a goal, not as a preamble or anything, but if you want to include it as a goal still, thumbs up or down. All right, so that one is gone. <laughs> and it's gonna integrate itself into other places. So that's Everywhere. doing a good job. Right. We're narrowing them down. <laughs> <laughs> So inclusive, equitable, and engaged community. We haven't really touched on that one a lot. And I will say that under, because it wasn't, it was in department work plans only, I think this one really stuck. Most of the work was under my work plan and the city manager's office work plan about work with the social and economic justice advisory committee and creative discourse. That's really what a lot of this one came down to. There were some, um, you know, we could talk about um, there's other things that could go under that, like our homelessness response, um, but that could also go under public health and safety. So there's a whole lot of 
other things that could go there or can find other homes. And that work could go under responsive and responsible government. Right, too. exactly. Because right now, um, we've gotten our equity report and now it's time for us as staff to integrate that into everything that we do, right? We've gotten yes. recommendations. How do we start pulling those recommendations and putting them into action and not just a report, right? So. Um, well, that's probably still, <coughs> at this stage, we've got recommendations. We have not, as the council said, yes, out of these 10 recommendations, mm -hmm. we agree with six, we kind of agree with two, and we don't agree with two. Mm -hmm. We haven't done that. And that's true. That seems like that's part of what we need to be doing. Okay. As a and responsible, a responsive government. Right. Mm -hmm. like, so just looking, I just pulled up the equity report. Um, and it's the consultant recommendations. I mean, a lot of it really is, I think, for like the next phase is looking at the accessibility of city government. So that's like um, language access. I mean, it's a lot of like physical access. It's looking into things like stipends, which you know we have talked about before, so to get more accessible for people to serve. So okay. I mean, maybe if we add accessible responsible and responsible government, is yeah. at least getting at that. I think, and then the other suite of recommendations were um, law enforcement related, which I think would clearly go under public health and safety, and, and maybe there's some, you know, we had some, like, verbiage in the vision that, uh, you know, so maybe part of our goal to, like, maybe it's a verb or something that is getting at, like, how we're, um, you know, delivering our public health Yeah, we had a good phrase uh, for public safety services. But. Um, what if, I like this idea of like adding a word to the like responsive and responsible government. Um, doesn't start with the letter R, but um, <laughs> I mean accessible is one, but I, I also kind of, I'm wondering about the word equitable, because I feel like it's a little broader, mm -hmm. but it would include accessible. Um, Happy to be wrong about that, but there's an idea. And it, because I feel like that's an important sentiment, it's almost like <coughs> a value um, more <coughs> than, a, than a city goal exactly. Well, maybe that will show up in our mission. In our, yeah. In our mission. Right. Like if like that sent, I feel like it's important to capture that sentiment. Yeah, I, I feel like if we can include that word in responsible and responsive government, maybe add the word equitable, or, or if we, even if we just say, like, it's a part of it, or if it's built into the vision, um, it just needs to be somewhere. I think you're right that if you do all of these other goals uh, to accomplish your vision, you will inevitably have an inclusive and equitable yeah. um, community. I think the engaged part, what Lauren was saying, was really important and making sure that's captured maybe under the responsible government, if that's what y'all are thinking. Um, um, that would be accessible. You know, I wrote down some of your actions and strategies that are coming out of this conversation as well. <coughs> and so um, that's, a, that's a thought. I, I think the engaged piece is really important. I just don't want to lose sight of that because mm -hmm. um, my concern is, is and I don't want to be like wordsmithing here, like we're <laughs> certainly okay. getting into Easy. that. But, but you know, with responsive, responsive is just passive. And what we want to do is be proactive and engage our That's community. That's when we say responsible and engaged government. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I just, I, w I just want to, I, w I feel like the, you know, we need to, we need to own that. Mm -hmm. The onus is on us to engage in an equitable way. Course, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but 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 that's very fair like that's I think that that's one of our challenges with our communications is you know we rely on too many channels that aren't equitable and um, and I have thoughts about how we can fix that but that's you know the next set of pieces of paper so um, but I do think that it, that having that pr and coming back to Bill's notion of verbs like this is where we need to be when we're setting our goals So I like Bill's idea of 
of, of sort of getting, we're talking about getting rid of this one and changing it to responsible and engaged government. Sounds good. I like that. With that, with that statement in mind, so the thumbs up and down to that, thumbs up to scrapping this verbiage and changing this verbiage and sort of moving the things in sure. this space. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wonder bar. <laughs> so now we're down to thoughtfully planned built environment. Which again, I do, I do think a lot of that is very planning heavy. It's Mike. It, it is that, that <laughs> was basically Mike Mike's is department. <laughs> 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 Just put it out. No, no, it's not the like staff. staff. <laughs> or using our staff well. Let's just The thing that gets me about that one is like, the thoughtfully doesn't really mean anything. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that could mean anything. Right. <laughs> but the, uh, yeah. yeah. No, I'm with you. Yeah. Well, thoughtfully was supposed to be that you had a standard. Well, it didn't get a majority when you first went around. So that no, it didn't. Scrap yeah. it. It Gone. seems like it's still busy. Oh, all right. Well. We, I mean, certainly, like you said, a lot of what, what Mike's um, group does and his team does is involved in almost everything because planning is a central core of one of one of our core functions, right? Yeah. Um, so that's fine. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm trying to think of like, is there any reason to have something around planning? Like, are, is our work going to be involved in planning? Very well, it much? will be, but it still yeah. it could be under some of these other things. I think, you know. If you really don't have something about planning, it would kind of go back to when we talked about the vision or the mission of growing, you know, if yeah. you really want to set a goal of, you know, it's the council's goal is to plan for a growing city, yeah. that's different than thoughtfully plan. That's, uh, this is something we want to see, and so now we're going to make policies and things that address that. I mean, the, that's a different st kind of statement. The thoughtfully planned and built environment, in, in I guess in, in my head, it is, it is, uh, it does come back to these other things, like if it's planned, built environment that that's about development, then that's really community prosperity. If it's really if it's thoughtful because it is considering environmental concerns, that's environmental stewardship. If it's thoughtful because it's um, you know because we're just trying to build more housing, then it's more housing. You know, like that's all the ways that I can think of thoughtfully planned, built environment playing out. It, I think it could fit elsewhere under multiple things. Or it's thoughtful because we want a built environment, but we don't want to look want it to look like those acres of identical houses. Right. Those. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. All right. Plus. So we dropped. It's done. Yeah. Oh. This feels yeah, okay. good. So it's it's three and one. Yeah. Three. So that that looks really good. <laughs> and so um, sort of. What the next part of that was to take the strategies from those goals. So what I would like us to do is just to maybe five minutes so I can write these things in a legible way so that we can, we can look at what this actually means for what your goals are right now. So if you don't mind a uh, we're taking a break. Small five. break for me to just, just five, five minutes. Write things so we're not just all staring at me while I write things. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Great. Sure. So. We've already sort of discussed um, what some strategies that you may have for some of these goals would be. So like, again, we talked about like encouraging new businesses and built infrastructure. Um, that is a strategy to accomplish community prosperity. <laughs> you talked about maybe economic development staff member. That could be a strategy also to go back to community prosperity. We talked about creative discourses, equity recommendations that could fit into a responsible, engaged community, right? So these are all strategies and actions that y'all have been thinking about and brainstorming already. So strategies are generalities on how to support your goals that you just came up with, right? Um, there is one of our things that we sort of reworked that I use as an example, is how do we maintain clear communication, right? What are our strategies to make sure that we have clear communication? If that is a strategy that y'all want to look at, 
it's up to us then as staff to tell you here's to recommend to you here's how we would do that do you like this plan yes no and also right? if you have suggestions we yeah of course them down. this is going to be a collaborative process you remember last year we brought to you a bunch of initiatives and plans this is this is us asking you to help us prioritize what you want before we enter our budget process before we start figuring out what the next year's planning will be and what will look like so we're going to take your recommended recommended strategies and proposed initiatives and actions. I'm sorry. <coughs> <coughs> proposed initiatives and actions to help implement those strategies. So, um, and I, you weren't here. I did have COVID. I don't have COVID. I am I am still in long term recovery. Uh, so. So what I'd really like us to do is spend some time really thinking about each one of these and uh, do as many sort of like str what strategies, this is the time to, if you have a project or, or something that you'd really like to see within this plan, now would be the time to talk about it, right? Um, our planning director, I want to call it Mike, really talked to us about, uh, who just left, of course, of course. Um, <laughs> the, talked about making sure strategies um, evoke one of these three things. What do you want to do with this goal? Do you want to maintain what we have currently? Do you want to evolve and move forward what we do currently? Or do you want to transform it entirely, right? So those are good things to keep in mind when you're, when you're, you're brainstorming your strategies to accomplish these goals. So again, this is something that staff is able to help with if this is we're coming up blank, but I know not one of you is going to come up blank for, for things you want to see done to accomplish these goals, right? This so, is your wheelhouse, right? Yeah. So this is what we want to hear. We want to hear um, ideas on how you would like to see us move forward community prosperity. So with that in mind, number one, what kind of strategies do you see? I mean, you've definitely already started on some of those, so I'll write and that down. And you want, you know, is this, a, is this a maintenance, an evolution, or a transformation? staff member for economic development. That might be a strategy. And using one of those verbs, does it need to be in relationship to the other goals? No, it would be, no, okay. no, it, would be no. it would be with regard to this goal. So just this, okay. you know, we let's pick it let's pick a different one. No, I got it. Sustainable That's infrastructure. Okay. We just want to keep doing what we're doing. Do we want to just evolve it more or are we gonna tear the thing down and do something completely different? So go ahead. Oh. Not all, not all of your goals have to fit. Question into that. for us, to okay. Okay. No. So, like, no. if you say, "I this is new, right? This is transformative." We don't have an economic development staff member. Not every strategy that you have for community prosperity has to be transformative. Right. These are just suggestion words to think about. So I, I wonder if, like, so Donna said one thing at the beginning, like, I'd like to see the city be more involved in, like, social services, right? Mm -hmm. I think, like, a statement like that warrants a conversation before we get into this, right? And I, I think it's a, I'm on, on the homelessness task force, my sins, um, and, you know, I don't think we're necessarily getting clear direction from the homelessness task force, which we need to do, which we said today. If you give, give us proposals, we need a budget, we need to know, like, who's providing the services, we need to know where it is, we need to know, like, how is it going to happen here, <laughs> or it's going to be tough for us to make a decision. Uh, but I also think we need to give them some direction, too, because the things on the table are everywhere from, uh, you know, we need another garden park out there, it's just going to cost, like, 5 or 10 k to, uh, Norwich had a pretty good presentation on a $2.5 million warming shelter. <laughs> so, like, uh, you know, I think... We, we owe them to say, okay, what level of social services are we going to provide? Are we going to throw some hotel vouchers on there? Are we going to like work with community partners to have like staffing around the clock 24/7 to make up for homeless shelters? It's like a big conversation, and I feel like it's hard to like come up with actual examples of that until we have a collective conversation like that. What is like providing more social services like look like? Right? There might be a whole council meeting that would like warrant that, but well, like I said at the beginning, you know, don't. Don't fight every battle. This might be one is determine, set a goal or a strategy to determine the level of human services involvement the council, the city wants to take on and set that for a future. Like, like you said, that could be a whole meeting. Right, right. I'd like to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put a number two next to that for the maybe responsible and engaged 
mm -hmm. to to community. Um, I don't know if that, unless you want it to go under community prosperity. Cameron, can I have I would put it under the share show, but I would think we'd just take one goal and take strategies for that. But well, right, I just don't want that to go away. Okay, yeah, I know. Well, that wouldn't that be under community prosperity? Whatever. Yep. Go. Um, Fine. Too many cooks. Turn <laughs> level yeah. social services. So that's it. You know, the whole thing about social services, human services, I mean, that is really a classic, that is a great policy discussion because do you want to maintain kind of the low to non level that we're doing now? Do you want to evolve it to something a little more? Or do you say, this is transformative, we're going to suddenly create resources and capacity to, you know, deliver human services on some level and then to Right. We need to be honest. Oh, sorry. No, I, 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 like, we just need to be honest, I think. Like, if we say, okay, you know, this is the state's responsibility, we should have no role in it. We should just say it, you know. Um, I'm not saying that is the way to go, but I think that's the kind of stuff we need to get done um, and dusted. With. So, at the risk of being another cook in the kitchen, um, <laughs> I I don't know. Do, do, do you all have lists of, like, things, of ideas? No? Okay. Because I do. And I'm, I'm worried <laughs> about, like, I have 17 things on my list. And that some of them are, like, more detail, more, they're more action level than this. And I'm... Well, to be perfectly honest with yeah. you, the way yeah. I anticipated this part of this going is that we just start yelling out stuff y'all want to do. <laughs> and then staff okay. can come back and look at where do we think this fits into right. the, the protocols that yeah. we already have and the okay. work that we already have going. What goal that's, does that fall under? That's kind of what I was hoping for. Is I, I kind of yeah. just want to like spit out my whole <laughs> yeah, yeah. list. Yeah, yes. I want to do that all <laughs> then, then we can go back and say maintain, yep. evolve, transform. Yeah. Not now. Uh, right. And say, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, this one goes under community yes. prosperity, but this one goes under public yeah. health and safety. And Fine, just... We'll you know what I mean? Like, yep. um, right. is that, a, I mean, I, I realize that is less organized. I guess, way, that's fine. I guess, and then I guess the. Yeah. So I think if we were worried about the semantics. Great. Right. Yeah. So far ideas. away, so Mayor, go for I don't, it. I don't, I mean, I apologize for cutting off the conversation about specifically community prosperity, because that might be fruitful in itself. Um, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to say a whole bunch of things. Is that go okay? And, <laughs> recognizing that, you know, we're going to talk about them. <laughs> Everyone may not agree, and that's okay. Um, okay. Um, explore conservation efforts uh, around Berlin Pond. Um, establish uh, an infant, or zero through five year old child care. Uh, program. <laughs> Vested interest here. Yeah. <laughs> True. Uh, I don't know. Sounds <laughs> like a crazy fair. I said exactly the same thing I know a year did. ago. I know. I know. Yeah, just I know. Fair. You were but planning. Knowing you, you yeah. were planning. Thoughtfully <laughs> <laughs> planned. Uh, okay. Um, we've kind of said this, but figure out our economic development. Um, strategy, whether that's a person, a, an employee, or an outside entity. Yeah. Is that outsourced to Montpelier Live? Is that internal? We just need to have that conversation. Um, I would like to, this is more around budget stuff, but either plan to bond for net zero plan implementation 
or merely start with um, engineering studies. Um, uh, consider uh, funding options, like potentially bonding, around Confluence Park and the possibility of dam removals. Um, we have to do this anyway, so this probably doesn't rise to the level of, like, we got to figure out what to do with the remaining $50,000 that we set aside. We can skip that. Uh, okay. Um, we're going to, uh, we need to consider uh, stormwater utility. That's, maybe that was already going to happen anyway. Um, explore uh, all ages child care from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. to match parent work hours. Um, need to follow up uh, on the home energy I information ordinance. Uh, consider bonding or revisioning the plan for the rec building. Um, there needs to be website improvement. Uh, I'd like to see increased coordination. I'm sorry, am I going to ask? Nope. Okay. Consider um, increased coordination with the CAN network. Uh, I'd like us to consider our role in the future of Five Home Farm Way. Uh, oh, yeah. Also, Apparently I had some duplicative ones in here, so I, not, th it's not 17, that's great. So I don't have anything more specific than this, but I'm calling it, uh, <laughs> it should not be called this. Uh, the housing task, I'd like to consider, I was going to call it the, um, the Polly Nickel um, <laughs> housing initiative plan, but it's not Polly Nickels, it's the housing, uh, task force. So this, um, I'd like to explore um, options from the housing task force plan. Perfect. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's not the Polly Nickel plan. <laughs> okay, done. Thank you for listening. <laughs> And so, you know, I really see this as, as an opportunity to, to hear these things. And for staff, for a lot of these things, staff has been considering so, yeah. or, or working on something akin to this. And so hearing that these are your the things that you want to see in your plan allows us to have a more robust um, plan to give back to you for feedback and prioritization, right? And then your assignment to different goals. Right, and I think somehow we've got to figure out but maybe it'll just be when the draft comes back on a process by which we decide if everyone's on board with all of this. Right, right, so. right. So last year we did a really good, like, I think Zoom allowed us to do a really good voting system for that that we'll probably put back in place. Okay. So that's the next step for us to figure out. So. Yeah. I have a couple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I buy Pop Community Center. A lot of us uh, don't have anywhere to gather for ceremonies or other things, and it's lovely that the churches in town will offer spaces, but for some of us, we don't have a good relationship historically. Yeah. <laughs> um, and just having a space that could be usable for many different cultural events, um, we know what we need. <laughs> And it's it's lacking. Um, I know. Never mind. That's another thing. <laughs> um, and then you know, I work for the Family Center of Washington County, and I'm a homeless family advocate. So having more, I don't even want to say affordable, because that could mean a lot of different things to different people. But um, sustainable housing for folks that have experienced homelessness or are precariously housed. You know, we can throw money and, and all kinds of, you know, vouchers, but if people don't have the systems in place to help support them through that process and keeping them on a good path, they're not going to stay home, uh, housed for very long. So. so is this really housing support services, not housing? Probably. But 
but I have housing, to, so we have a place to support those services exactly. on my list. So. Lori, you have your hand up. I'm what this looks like, but being ready to take as much advantage of federal and state money as possible. Maybe this is the year we send some of our $700,000 lobbying contract to have some money in the appropriation um, so that we can take advantage. Um, but I just like to be as close having the resources to like be in the room and advocating for ourselves to get good money and being having like the plans and the structure in place that we can act on it in the timelines that we need to. Some of this has to be stuck in a couple of years and I know it's hard to like turn on a dime and be like, let's do this big infrastructure project we weren't planning on. So I think hopefully like thinking as creatively as possible about like what we could front load. Um, restroom facilities? Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, homelessness, like like Connor was saying, like having a better plan and acting on it, I think, like, touching on what you were talking about, and, um, and outdoor rep, what Alex, his <laughs> plan in place, and he's vision. And I'll leave it there for now, that was a lot. <laughs> Do you have more? No, nothing that needs to, bigger picture. <laughs> I guess I'll just add to a few things only because you know, it's a lot of pieces of paper. <laughs> going on. But, but maybe I'll add a little more detail to some of my thinking of what we're talking of uh, things that have been brought up. Um, uh, around communication, I think what we need to do is, is create channels and methods of communication that are um, equitable and accessible and owned by us um, that complement other channels of communication. Um, I have thoughts about how we can do that, but I think that relying on too many external platforms to get our message out um, uh, doesn't necessarily uh, meet that responsible and engaged community goal that we have. Um, to, you know, Ann mentioned you know, bonding for Confluence Park, but I, I would sort of broaden that. Um, a fair amount to say that we should prioritize um, the space both near and in our rivers um, for economic development and environmental stewardship reasons. Um, I think a lot of that relies on a relationship with the state and the land that they own in the city and what are their long-term plans and how is it used and how much of it is paved, it's tied into stormwater, it gets you know, really nuance pretty quickly, but I do think that that's like a, a broader picture that we should, um, that we should approach. And we, you know, studying, you know, the removal, uh, or, or, or being involved in this, in researching the potential and what it would mean to remove the Bailey Street Dam is a perfect example where there's, you know, contaminated soils upstream from that. Um, it's not really serving a purpose, but that's a that's a. But these things take a lot of time. So starting these first steps, I think, um, even beyond the Confluence Park in our conversations, I think I think now is important to get those pieces moving. Cameron, that's not a bullet point at all. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, those are, <laughs> those are 
<laughs> two under bullet points. Under bullet points. Okay, so, yeah. so, I, but I, I do think like having that broader perspective is really important, and thinking about the relationship, you know, that we have with the rivers um, and and the, and, and the, the contaminated soils that are in those rivers. I think that's really important. Um, to echo what um, Lauren said, I, I, you know, I look at grant readiness re relative to COVID, but I think it's like that 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 ship has sailed relative mm -hmm. to. COVID, I mean, unemployment's done. It, it ended last week, I mean, there, you know, will there be more, who knows, but what, what may be coming, and should, hopefully will be coming, is this infrastructure bill, and that, you know, is in a couple different phases, and I think being prepared, like you said, and ready to, um, ready to engage in that process, I think, um, is, is really important. And, and I do think trying to be, <laughs> Turning it around a little bit to be a little more specific, I do think it would be. It came up at our last meeting, um, but prioritizing with DPW, not just saying like we the roads need to be better, but I think it's really important in, from an engagement perspective and public <coughs> health and safety and all these things that that we task, we hopefully can task DPW to create a long-term plan so that we're not just playing whack-a-mole over and over again. And I know, I'm talking about the roads, I understand that what's under the roads is a whole different, you know, whole different thing, but how can we, you know, look at paving and having a plan and really communicating that to people so that it's not just a constant, it's never, there's the sense that it's just never gonna get better. And I think if we had a plan and budgeted appropriately for it, that it would, um, it would go a long way. And I think that goes hand in hand with what potentially be, could be other infrastructure grant funds that could come through through this federal money, et cetera. So, um, and, you know, I'll just, you know, add like a check mark to supporting what Alec and um, what Dan at Montpelier Live are doing around supporting the um, recreation economy in our city as an economic driver because I think that we are, like I've said before, uniquely situated here because we have such a strong downtown. Um, we may not have a ski mountain out our back door, but we have a great downtown that people can go come back to at night and that's that's a, a real selling point and I think a lot of businesses um, are, are seeing that as a reality. So supporting that effort as well. So. Not quite 17, but you know, uh -huh. I tried. I tried. <laughs> well, mine was the 17. <laughs> I, I can rattle a few off, if you want. Um, I think rather than like specific staff for economic development, consider a range of options for it. Like, okay, here's three ways you can go. That'd be a pretty good discussion to have, one of which could be a staffer. But uh, I, I think there's a number of ways we can do that. And as part of that, I, I think we really need to look to aggressively this be a separate bullet, uh, attract a couple more anchor businesses in town here. You know, like, losing Nicky is a blow, and, you know, we have ideas. It's like, wouldn't it be great if we could bring Vermont Law School here? They were just looking at Burlington. But then I, I don't think we have anybody to, like, follow through at this point and, like, have those discussions. So having that kind of discussions. Um, Incentivize businesses to come that benefit working families. I hate that people have to go to Walmart or something to buy a pair of shoes for their kids. Like, you know, I don't know how you actually put that, but to get businesses involved. <laughs> if I don't know how to write it, how we're going to do it. But, uh, so that's a couple economic development ones. I, you know, looking at vacancies in town, I don't know what they look like right now, you know, as far as an average, you know, city center. But looking for ways we can fill up storefronts, I think. And, you know, like, I, I think I would have, like, floated vacancy tanks before. That might be too extreme, you know, with COVID going on. But things like that. How do we fill up the, I know it's a third rail, right? But that's okay. It's a time to be provocative. Um, uh, we need to um, take a closer look at micro transit, I think, and how it's functioning. I think the concept is fantastic that, you know, we can pick up folks who have accessibility issues up at Town Hill Road and bring them right to their doctor's appointment. But right now, you go on the app, and it's like two hours wait, and, like, people aren't using it. So why aren't they using it, you know? What can we do to pressure AOT and other departments to give the resources or give resources ourselves? 
to make sure that's a successful program because that's it's huge, you know. Um, I think looking at staffing levels in every department, some of this probably goes. It, it's we're going to have bad outcomes unless we have a full police force here. Like that, that's how bad stuff happens. And forget like coffee with a cop and interacting and developing a beat and a rapport with people. Um, I, I think we're probably at a, a bad place with staffing levels there. Similar like with DPW, we could th I think with Jay saying, we could throw all the money in the world and say like fix the roads, but if we don't have the people to do it, you know, uh, that's a problem in itself. So staffing levels up and down there. Um, and let's throw in a fun one just to, <laughs> just to finish. Uh, I dropped the ball on this a few years ago, but I think we should have a sister city that <laughs> gives us a cultural exchange with an international city for our kids. We could have a big event. Like, let's do something fun. It's Only if it's a city that has scooters. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I wrote down scooters and deleted it. But, uh, but don't, don't think it's going away forever. I'm bringing it back at some point. Yeah. Actually, now we got jerseys from Montpelier. I've, I've lived yeah. and worked in a scooter bound, uh, scooter project city, and it is a nightmare. I, lived, I lived in one for a month, and it was the best thing that ever happened. They, they end up in rivers. <laughs> they end up in trees. <laughs> There's yeah, snow you, here. You, you, you know the history of scooters here? I'm yeah. not, I don't even know if I want to get into the history of scooters here. Okay, okay. okay. We're just okay. supposed to Yep, yep, yep. It was the best thing that ever happened to us now. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to agree with everything that's said. It's down. I wrote down scooters. Not scooters, huh? You get to vote oh, later. Yeah. <laughs> you, I'm going to be looking at who doesn't put it down. Are you done? Are you ending with scooters? I'm going to end with scooters. Okay. Okay. Um, I really think it's important that this, when I talked about partners for uh, holistically human services with multi ages and needs I'm really thinking about having somebody who can sit at the table to offer a token financial carrot and staffing so we have somebody around the table with all these regional groups that have so far not gotten us anywhere with any what I call temporary housing and that I really feel we need a temporary housing facility and with services, that's a real regional partnership with all the community cities and the nonprofits and the state. But we can't have that, I don't feel, unless we have the right person at the table. And I don't expect our committees to do that. I think we really need a professional there who knows what they can offer and be um, credible at the table. So that's how I was approaching that, as multi-services and not just temporary housing, but from there lead into other things like child care, senior centers, just all sorts of stuff once we have a presence there. But I think as uh, much as I resisted us being a social service provider that we ultimately will have to put our staffing and our money there to make it happen. That I think there's a real shift that in order for <coughs> us to do that in a holistic way and a regional way so we're not carrying the full load. So, from that, then I think we really need to also go into the public safety regionally and really commit to being a partner there. And I think there's a lot happening that's already there, but I'd like to see that stronger. I definitely want to see restrooms. God, do I want to see restrooms. <laughs> and along with that, I really, I mean, I used to, we backpacked when my kids were young. Six months in Europe, and you, you could pay a dime to take a shower. You know, bathrooms, they were all over the place. And so it just seems that we could do something not only with a public restroom for toilets, but have one or two showers there. I think that we've underutilized the transit system, and I'm afraid that because of the pandemic, we won't ever see what it could be. The outside space alone by the, the, the shared youth path could be really utilized. So that takes me to the Confluence Park. I want us to really be more active in that partnership, definitely remove the dams. Bruton Park should be moved, it should be moved, it should be moved, and that we really also, by the same token, I feel we've backed off our city like to get parks throughout the whole town, that means across the river, and when I say city, city parks, I'm especially thinking of parents with young kids and seniors, so they have a place to sit, but also a topic and have simple places to play, whether that's just a sand, things to climb on, it can be very minimal and be very, very helpful. And so along with that, not only do I want parks everywhere, but I want to pick up what the 
Parks Commission and Alex wants to do is making the parks a destination. Mm -hmm. That the city definitely needs to redo that website. I just want to shake it every time I go on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can't imagine how any residents find anything, because I certainly can't. And um, that with that, that we really become serious about marketing our parks. I mean, we've gone way, I think, just advanced so much with more trails connecting, the fight, uh, fat, fat bikes, fat bikes. The fat bikes have really been successful and that we need to really market it. By the same token, sorry, Alex, we still don't have the signage that we need. Uh, and so that I don't think people yet get that the North Branch is really a conservation path. Mm -hmm. That's why we ask dogs to be on a leash that aren't, because we don't want the wildlife disturbed. And if dogs are on a leash and people stay on the path, believe it or not, the wildlife adapts and doesn't leave. So I'd really, really like to see us to get back to that mission. Uh, the other thing is community events, uh, the multi-age community events. I love Earth Day. I love the Halloween. I forget what it's called. Uh, help volunteer there. But, and that's the most multi-age of anything I've seen. But I'd like to see things that are not just kid-based, that they're really multi-age based, mm -hmm. which means they have to be accessible to people who can't walk a long ways or stand on their own and all that kind of physical as well as mental endurance that there's a way to make things more short term that both kids temperament and the senior temperament <laughs> could get through. Um, let's see what else I have here. Go, 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 go. Yeah, I just have to say one word. DPW has made all sorts of plans for the roads and life happens. They've never been able to do it. And if it's not the money disappearing, it's mother nature knocking us off our block. So I think that indeed we can do another plan and, and they are working on it. And that's one thing that I think has been unfortunate, is that the Capital Improvement Plan Committee hasn't meant. And the first time that most of this council has really seen about pavement and the index was the, the previous um, meeting council that they did a presentation on. But that committee sat there and made road priorities. But then you'd have a break. Mm -hmm. Then you'd have this freeze thaw, the highways crumbling. The technology is so limited, and it's like, you know, we got pavement and everybody sort of then backed off and kept not improving the technology. So it's so, so frail. I mean, it's amazing. All this traffic, we just assume this pavement, but it's not durable. <laughs> it's just not. And so I think we have to accept that. And I think uh, Zach really was trying to get that across in the five-year life of a road. Can you imagine that? Millions of dollars, five-year life, <laughs> but that's the reality. So uh, I just feel like we need to educate ourselves and our community so much better about things like that. Uh, that and keep offering it again and again, that the, re the presentations they do at council, do it elsewhere, whether it's about the roads or whether it's about every all of our business. When we really see that there's a lot of, I'm going to call it, Cross the fence gossiping and need some real facts, we should offer a community meeting. People may not come, but we offer it. Gee, we've seen this discussed. We want to talk to you about what we feel is our reality of what happened or our reality of what's going on. And I think the more we can do that as a council in our departments, the more we will engage. And we'll never do enough, no matter how much. But I would feel better if we really started looking at the more controversial things and just meet it head on and say, here we are. I, I can remember Tom, uh, CPW, he'd come to these hearings on neighborhoods yelling at him and be so calm and just do diligence. And I know all the department heads do that, but just, I just remember Northfield Street, it's like, whoa, Harrison M., whoa, <laughs> Saturday morning, 9 a.m., and, and we just have to take that on more aggressively, I feel, that we just show up, whoever comes here, but we're offering ourselves to talk about these things if people really want to know. So anyway, that's all. Awesome. All right. Have you um, got left, Jeff? Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got a few things. Um, evaluate the uh, tax stabilization uh, program. Got it. And figure out if it's meeting our goals, and if it's not, what else we could do to uh, attract uh, businesses 
to the city um, with housing. And one of the things that we talked about was that, for one thing, we the housing task force at our last meeting did spend some time talking about, well, what are the few things that we could be asking the city for? And, and we're, we're going to hear be hearing from them. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when, but we have another meeting coming up. Because third week, third Thursday of every month. But uh, get some, but consider having someone the way uh, economic development uh, departments do, have someone to affirmatively work with uh, and recruit and uh, try to get housing developers to uh, to build. So affirmative outreach for housing development is a short way to put it. Um, <clears throat> if we want to get more housing, we need to preserve the housing we have now. That uh, so I would say consider uh, regulating short-term rentals. There, there's a tremendous impact, negative impact on uh, the rental housing stock from the short-term rental industry. Um, possibly couple, couple that with uh, with a proposal that I saw to uh, encourage or to work on some kind of short-term rental development. If people can you, know, you say that one more time for me? Short-term rental development. Okay, like thank you. Getting uh, Airbnb not to put it in people's houses, but build an Airbnb building somewhere. Obviously, we're not, the city's not going to build it. Um, I heard about uh, recruiting people to serve on city committees and boards. Um, my former daughter-in-law, uh, many years ago, was invited to this effort that the city they were living in was doing where the, the city would get all the nonprofits and city boards and committees that, that are looking for members and do outreach to employers, to other community groups to say, come talk to us, we're going to have a, a town committee fair or something. So come and let us make a pitch to you about uh, what you could do if you were on any one of these 28 city uh, city boards, so that we don't just put the notice up and uh, and nobody signs up, or the only people that sign up are the people that are already on, um, who are mostly really good, but also might want to have a break and some some of those people might be thinking well I have to keep signing up because <coughs> nobody else is gonna if I don't. Um, if we're gonna develop uh, more parks, make sure that we are uh, maintaining sufficient res uh, staff resources to service the, the parks that, that we're gonna have. Um, maintain the uh, funding for the uh, housing trust fund. Um, that, that might be a for now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just love it. All things that... Well, there's certainly no shortage of things. Yes, <laughs> so, so we're definitely not going to get to a point of voting tonight. That's not happening. But what we did last time, and I think this is helpful as I sort of drew the chart out, is we came up with your goal, and then we wrote down all of the strategies. Um, some of them may be staff supported and some of them may be council like coming out of this list that you had right 
And then what we could do is a straw pull vote, and then I could bring this to you instead of a fully fleshed out uh, plan to look at. So this would be the first step. So we would see what has the majority of council support to include in the plan, right? So you had like, a, a, let's say a bunch of things about economic development. There might be like 15 rows here, right? But the ones that should be included in your council strategic plan, which again, doesn't mean that they're not gonna get done, but the ones that have the majority of the council voting for them, right, would be included in your strategic plan. And so. you're still giving us a limited number of votes? to help us prioritize. Yes, I would need to <laughs> come up with the exact number, but yes. Yeah, whatever it is. Yes. So you'll have the dots next time. Yes, well, it, 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 I think they would we be digital. We have the dots with us, but we didn't expect, I don't think, quite this many. <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> I, this is fine. So, right, so the dots may be a, a digital straw poll where we do it um, independently. You send it to me, and then we bring it to council and talk about it publicly and do the formal voting. And yeah, well, so, so this, yeah, we'll have to come up with the plan, but um, I hadn't planned on coming back to y'all until October with a fully fleshed out thing. But to me, there's definitely room for another step in between that, mm -hmm. um, where y'all could hear feedback about these ideas. We can make them public, obviously, with the agenda, and then we could make formal votes on, on their inclusion. Mm -hmm. So I think- We can oh, think of a process question. for that. Yeah, of course. Um, so, under the category that you have their strategies, mm -hmm. when, you, when it says council versus staff, is that like council, like th these were council generated versus these were staff generated? Right, is that but yep. they'd also be on the same list right. so that you can, because okay. there may be stuff that, or, or actions that, because okay. some of these are strategies, some of these are actions. <laughs> right, some of these right. Are, you know, some of these, so we've got we've got to layer all this into the way that it makes the most sense. Yeah. And then put in the stuff that, we know are in these other plans that we've already talked about. See where there's duplication. And I guess the only question I have really is, is there anything, you know, right now this is just assuming that everybody's idea is everyone else is fully right. on board with and I don't know how we, if we want it. Well, that comes down to I guess that'll okay. come down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, one further question. Um, I kind of assume that there are some things that Maybe this is a bad assumption, but the, there may be some things that we kind of either have to do. Right, and we don't we'll sort those. And, yeah. and so I, I just hope that when we get to voting that we don't have to vote on those. Right, right? that no, those should right. be separate because, like, yeah. Yeah, no, that's you right. know, I don't want don't to waste a vote. <laughs> but I, I would like us to come back together live after that initial vote. Yeah. Because I don't think we did last time, and I really missed that for any kind of final selection. Oh, yeah. So. We definitely had to do all of it over Zoom, and it was the worst. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying we do any of this over Zoom. This will all be in um, public meetings, uh, yeah, council meetings. It would be a council agenda item where we sit down and talk about well, I mean, it. I thought you were going to send it by a Zoom survey. And that's fine for the initial. Yeah, just for the initial down. to narrow just it down. Right. right. Thank you. So the other you. thing, um, which is... Uh, you know, I'm thinking as I'm looking at this and I'm looking at the staff over there is, um, you know, I guess I'm back to my plane. So where do you want to go when you get there and how much do you want to pay for it? Because there's a lot of really expensive stuff here. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and it's all great. But, um, you know, at some point we're, we're narrowing down now and I don't know how much, you know, how much work you want done or when you're going to want done to put money to these things because um, and then some of these have you know follow up so they're great ideas but then what is the I'm going to pick on one just because um, anything with it, like regulating part time rentals <coughs> that might be a good thing for housing but what's that going to take for us to do like are we going to have people checking that what you know what's the ongoing effort for that what's the cost of that effort how many are we you know what does that program look like? You know, so it's, it's a great idea, but is that real? Is at the end of the day, is it really get us? Is that going to do what we want? Or are we better off to just invest in getting more housing? So somehow we need to think of how we sort those up. That's just one, and there's a, you know, so a lot of these is what's the ongoing effort that goes. Once we've done this, what's left? What's the what's the annual cost? Um, so process wise. So I mean, first of all, I think there's there might be some like there's lumping. lots of yes yep. so that will help yeah. <laughs> um like 
I know that the first time I did this, there were like a bunch of things thrown out. I had no idea what any of it meant. Like, like is there a point? And there, there's things that have even come up recently of like, like this Berlin pot conservation where there's like this time sensitive, you know, unique opportunity that's popped up of some land adjacent to city owned land that like, I, I'm just like, it would be helpful for people to understand what the proposals are, but yeah, yeah Berlin pond conservation or, you know, name, you and know, so probably a lot of them, but I, I, did I understand that there's going to be like a conversation? Yeah. So let me, uh, let me go through some more slides here and I'll show you sort of what this all looks like. You mean you voted last year and you didn't know? Mm -hmm. oh. My first year. <laughs> I think there's another thing to add though, just before you do this quickly, is that, you know, this, as you know, those of you who've been on, this will, once we set this, this will guide our activity, will guide the agendas. Um, but stuff still comes up. I mean, it kind of goes back to the what's urgent, maybe not important, but it, it's urgent. It's like we said. So, you know, we may at some point have to have an agenda item whether to kick in for a purchase of land. And so the only question is how does that meet? Is, you know, is that an environmental stewardship? Is that, you know, is that consistent with our values and our goals, or is that just something we're not interested in? And so, uh, parkland, we probably will have to be talking about purchasing parkland. Uh, you know, so how does that fit into where we want to go and where's the, the money coming from? Yeah. So. I, just one other, like, I feel like it's a slightly unique year in having the, you know, little bit of city ARPA money that, you know, so if there's things like, engineering studies or things that are like one-time expenses that we could front load and like that set us up to even if it's like two years down the road that we're going to have the funding to do it or whatever but I guess just like how is there a lens of this unique moment of that plus there might be like a set of things that would be priorities if we could get state money for it but otherwise won't be but like what would we need to do to be ready for that and like so well that would be a good, good way to sort that too. yeah so there might be some like ways we can think about different things. Or well, and so, and so some of that would be now and some of that would be when we actually get to the budget and we try to put all yeah. this stuff in and we say, okay, now we have real, you know, now we see that. Yeah. Budget reality. Yeah. <laughs> okay, before we do that, I have one thing that I thought of that I want to get on the list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because pe people didn't go for it last time, but I'll throw it in again. <laughs> 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 Sneak it in last minute. <laughs> okay. 16-year-old voting for local elections. All right. Statue of Councillor McCullough. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, can I just? Yep. Oh, I, I just want to make it clear: Homelessness Task Force has to have some recommendations coming out in the next couple of weeks here. Yes. So I didn't include a bunch of specifics on this because it would have been too late. Uh, um, but we will be bringing. We have to do it. It's, uh, yeah. you know, yep. Yep. So. Connecting all of these things together, which I think gets to sort of Warren's point, is so that y'all just established your goals, which was really helpful. So now you have six, right? You've also come up with a lot of strategies, right? So we will be putting all of the strategies that you've um, put forward and staff can put forward in sort of a, in, into this matrix, right? You also came up with a lot of activities that could support those strategies. So we'll put those and what other things that staff um, recommends to get those strategies done. And then the things that we didn't really get into, but staff will be presenting to you is um, recommended action items to accomplish your initiatives that would accomplish your strategies and accomplish your goals. So what we'll probably look at next time is strategies and initiatives. We won't get down into the action because that's very in the weeds for y'all, right? So hopefully we'll be able to come to you with actions that support your initiatives that support strategies that support goals right so the things that will be i'll be asking you to sort of straw poll vote on electronically and then we'll bring to council next time is like these these three buckets and so i think that's really the we've changed a little bit of the next steps here together because this was a lot which is great and amazing so um but this is um a lot to synthesize. So what we'll be doing is doing that first pass of those first three layers, plus that mission and vision statement to start workshopping together. And that allows um, for more public feedback about the things that you discussed tonight. And we'll give um, the public uh, a way to see sort of those things outlined and weigh in on, on their prioritization as well. So I am excited. So my first goal for a first draft was October 13th. That's still a goal for a first draft. 
Um, but I will try to, my goal, my new goal is agenda. to put this on your next agenda. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. Right, yes. Thank you. Yeah. This was very exciting, and I really think this was very successful. So thanks, y'all. Um, really well, grateful. Ask us to talk anytime. <laughs> <laughs> like a bunch of blind up doors. Come on, come up with never-ending list of ideas with no money to put to them. You know, yeah. that's not what this one is about. You that's know? right. Visioning. Visioning is the important part. Jack has something. Yeah. Yes. Before we uh, before we adjourn. And so if we're done with this. Yes, yeah. I'm done. If y'all yeah. are done, if you feel done, we're yeah. done. Yeah. Okay, well, so without objection. No, no, no. Oh, just kidding. Wait, what? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there is objection. That's why I was saying that. Oh, I'm sorry. I was like spacing out there for a second. Hey, Stephen, could you, could you stop talking? It's a little distracting. Thank you. Go ahead. Before we adjourn, um, because there's a question been raised about the appointment of uh, and the counselor, do we want to schedule a special meeting sometime between now and the end of uh, September 13th, which is 10 days after the 17th. Uh, 17th? Sure. Okay, I thought. Well, Let me just, I'll double check it. 13th is Monday. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah potentially. No, it would be the 13th. Well, thir it's business day, so. So I was just going to suggest. So it's 17th if you go business day. Okay. But anyway, yeah, as soon as possible. So I was going to suggest a special meeting on the 13th. Sure. Yeah, that should work for me. No, it doesn't. Could even be a Zoom meeting. Uh, I'm not sure why you're shaking your head. Is that because we no, should I'm just, do it then? I'm saying it's fine. That works for me. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying no. Oh, so, no, I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, I was just kind of. What time? I just made a dentist appointment. Oh, in the <laughs> evening? <laughs> Evening. 6.30? You know, I'm going to Burlington's, and it's oh. late in the day. It's 4.30, but uh, I'll just change it. I, I can't do an evening on them Monday. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, Good. <laughs> I do noon. Well, you're on the afternoon. How's noon on, on that Monday? Afternoon. That's better. That's better. Yeah. 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 I, mm. I, I had something there, but that... Noon doesn't work okay. for me. I can move it around. Okay, okay. Me for this. What's that? Noon doesn't work for me, but you don't necessarily need me for this. On the 13th? On the 13th. I'm available. <coughs> You're available, and we can... Works for me. You've got legal opinions, so... I mean, we have the... Is there another... Uh, what's the latest we can do it? That, I think, Jack, to err on the side of caution, the 13th would be... The latest we can do it. The latest we can do it. Um, would one... Yeah, no. so that's what we're talking about, the 13th. So, so Lauren, you couldn't make yeah, it? I, is it a better time? Yeah, I can do it. 9 a.m. or 4 p.m. It sounds like the Yeah, I could do 9 a.m. also or 8 a.m. And, oh, you're, you're in school. Yeah, yeah actually, I could do... Uh, yeah, Monday. 9 a.m. is a little weird. <coughs> I could do like I could actually do like eight a.m. or eight thirty. Yeah. A.m. On the thirteenth. On the thirteenth. Eight thirty. Can you do it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. How's that for you, Connor? Yep. Eight thirty and decide? Zoom meetings. Eight, is it eight or eight thirty? Or do either one is fine. I don't. Either one's. Fine. We have something at nine. Eight thirty. Eight thirty. Eight thirty. Eight thirty. Please. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Get the kids to school. Exactly. Well, there you go. And okay. And there will have to be a physical presence. Yeah, I will we'll be, do that we'll here. be here. We'll be here. <clears throat> okay. But it will otherwise be, be here. Well, it'll be otherwise a Zoom meeting. Well, you can come here if you'd like, yeah. okay. but it will otherwise be Zoom. There will be a Zoom available. Okay. Yes, yeah. great. So, oh, and we have something at doing? big at 9, so um, um, it shouldn't take more than half an hour. I will be Zooming. I have to be at school. Okay. Yeah. I, I would probably come, but if, if I'm the only council member who's coming, I might not. Yeah, me either. I mean, that's why. Helps to know if people find Zoom. 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 Okay. 8.30 a.m. Zoom 30. and in person. Yep. And okay. one agenda item to Thank address you. the issue. That's, that's, I was thinking that. I was like, oh, yeah, we got to, we got to do that. Okay. Um, so I think that's it. So we're, we're clear 8.30, um, 13th. Any other 
the business before we're done. Okay. Thanks, you're welcome to time. Yeah, this was fun. Okay, yeah. Now I, without objection. Now without objection. <laughs> <laughs> Adjourned.